In Miami, we're at the corner of 15th Avenue and 6th Street. El Barrio, the block, the neighborhood, and this has been a neighborhood of success over recent decades for the Hurricanes, but that pendulum of success swinging the other way in recent times. Welcome, everybody, to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. It's the Hurricanes against Virginia Tech. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with David Norrie, Stacey Dales downstairs, joining us in just a few moments. Now, Virginia Tech comes off perhaps its best game of the season, a win against Clemson in their last outing. They have the best running back in the country right now, Brandon Orr, but their defense might be the big story as well. Well, last week against Clemson, I thought as far as defense goes, it was the best performance in the country in college football this year. The Virginia Tech defense has only given up 12 points a game. They held Clemson, the number one scoring offense in the country, to one touchdown. This Virginia Tech defense brings safeties up in the box. They dare you to throw the football, and they're really going to put stress on this Miami passing game tonight. Speaking of Miami, you know, usually at this time of the year, they're talking about national championships, conference championships. Neither the case this year. Greg Olson, their tight end, told me earlier this week that we need a win as badly as this program has ever needed a win. Well, I think the quarterback, Kyle Wright, needs a win tonight as well. This is a watershed game for him, a defining moment. As a starter, he's lost five out of his last ten starts as a Division I quarterback. If Kyle Wright doesn't come up with a big game tonight, I think his job may be at risk, Mark. The Hurricanes have said all the right things during the course of the week. We still have a lot to play for. We're still playing for pride. We're playing for the 305, their fans, and in a bigger thing, the program. Tonight, how invincible can they be? Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Number 23, Virginia Tech taking on the unranked Hurricanes. The Hurricanes, for the first time in six years, a home underdog in this game. A look at the scoreboard of the ACC. A couple of key games there. Georgia Tech, two scores by Calvin Johnson in that game. Georgia Tech controls its own destiny in the Coastal Division. Meanwhile, there are three, un actually one lost teams in the Atlantic Division, the pivotal game in that division tonight, Boston College and Wake Forest. Let's go downstairs now to Stacey Dales. Thanks, Mark. You know, the stakes are high for both teams in this game, but maybe more so maybe for Miami after a close loss to Georgia Tech last week. I spoke with several players, and they all told me this is a must-win situation. In fact, cornerback Kenny Phillips told me, hey, for the first time ever, maybe in the history of Miami football, we are the underdog here in the Orange Bowl. He said, nobody out there expects us to win. We're playing for pride. We're playing for respect. And by the way, we haven't won a big game yet this year. This could be that game. I also talked to Kyle Wright, the quarterback. He said players gathered on Tuesday for a players-only meeting. He said they got everything out on the table, all the miscues, the bad communication, the penalties. But he left a lasting message at the end of that meeting. He said, it's time to stop pointing the fingers. It's time to look at yourself in the mirror. We can either be 5-7 and seven at the end of the season, or we can be 10-3. and three. It starts tonight against Virginia Tech, Mark. Yes, Miami still, they say, with a lot to play for. And good news, they get some key players back in this ball game tonight. Kyle Wright, one of their leaders at quarterback, another leader which comes back tonight, John Beeson, their linebacker. You'll see a lot of snaps, although there he is, number two. Beeson will not start tonight. He was one of those people, one of those players that was imploring his teammates during that Tuesday players-only meeting to get it together and get it together now. It's a time right with immediacy for the Kings. Miami looking for its eighth consecutive trip to a bowl game. 
We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. And welcome back, everyone, to the Orange Bowl in Miami. I'm Mark Jones, along with David Norrie and Stacey Dales down to the field. A cool and breezy uh, 74 degrees, cool for most natives, that is. A 20-mile-per-hour wind. That's going to be a story during the course of the evening. Here at the Orange Bowl, there is a swirling wind because one in that stadium is open-ended. That's David Clowney for Virginia Tech. And Frank Beamer, the head coach, now in his 20th season on the sidelines for the Hokies. Miami won the toss, deferring to the second half. Frank Beamer says, we have continued to coach these kids well and continue to play hard and hope that we get a break or two from Georgia Tech. Monroe to kick off for the Hurricanes. And this one will go about eight yards deep into the end zone to Josh Morgan. And Virginia Tech will start off on his own 20-yard line as we look at the impact players for the Hokies. Brandon Orr has back-to-back 200-yard -back rushing games, and boy, that defense is playing lights out, David. Well, we talked about the performance last week against Clemson. Xavier Adibi playing exceptionally well in that ball game all over the field. And, you know, this is, this is a big, big game for both defenses, defenses that like to take away the run. And I feel, Mark, that the quarterback, Glennon or Kyle Wright that plays the best in this game, getting the ball down the field and penalizing the opposing defense for playing that style. I think that quarterback will be on the winning team tonight. There's a look at Glennon completing 58% of his passes on the season as eight touchdown passes mitigated by six interceptions. Here he is on the bootleg action. And Glennon showing some nice, robust athletic talents out to the 25-yard line. And we bring you the starting lineups presented by Outback Steakhouse. Glennon with a nice move, picking up about five or six yards on first down. And that offensive line are the group that have sprung Brandon Orr for consecutive 200-plus rushing games. And the big news is that Brian Schumann has been replaced by Brandon Gore. Schumann out with a knee injury. So we'll see how his replacement does tonight. Second down and five to go. Backs line up out of the offset eye. It's Allen and Orr. This is Orr over the right side. Has a nice gain and picks up the first down at the 33-yard line. Miami's defense, number four nationally against the run. And here's a look at that group. Now, the strength of this group, you would have to argue, might be its front seven, but especially its linebackers, a group that has been decimated by injuries in the last several weeks, actually going back to the start of the season. First down for the Hokies coming up. Nose of the ball resting on the 33-yard line. Uh, Barack Atkins and Elias Campbell. You can't miss Campbell. He's a tall dude at 6'8". A two tight end formation for the Hokies, and they put it on the ground. Glennon fumbles the snap, and he'll lose two yards back to the 31-yard line. Daryl Sharpton making the stop for the Hurricanes. Glennon won the starting job back in summer ball he beat out two other candidates vying for the job and uh Glennon is a third year sophomore has shown exceptional poise and the turning point for him was the georgia tech game albeit in defeat second and 11 coming up after the loss over 50,000 bringing a little bit of noise here they hand it off to Orr, and he stopped up right at the line of scrimmage by Taraz McRae. It'll be third and long, Virginia Tech. A spirited showing so far by that Miami defense. Well, this is definitely not only one of the top defenses in the ACC, but in the country. Very tough against the run. They have the ability to get an extra safety in the box to outnumber you. As we said at the top, the quarterbacks, respectively, for Virginia Tech and Miami tonight are going to have to loosen things up with the passing game to give their tailbacks room to run. David, it's a third down and 13. Glennon, little swing pass complete to Orr out of the backfield. He's a good receiver as well, but unable to pick up the first down. He's tackled at the 35 by Tavares Gooden. And it's fourth down coming up for the Hokies. And it's going to be a little bit tricky fielding these punts. Nick Schmidt comes in to punt for the Hokies. Looks like he's punting into the wind. 
And Bruce Johnson, number 22, returning this punt for Larry Coker's crew. Interesting that Johnson is standing at his own 35. Under normal circumstances, without the wind, that would be a little bit shallow, but this punt hung up by the wind, and it comes right down at the 32 to Johnson as we take a look at the impact players now for the Hurricanes after that 32-yard punt by Schmidt. Kyle Wright, completing 62% of his passes, has eight touchdowns on the season versus five interceptions. Lance Leggett trying to recover after a costly fumble last week against Georgia Tech. Last week against this Hokie defense, Clemson and their quarterback, Will Proctor, they were unable throughout the night to create a pass threat down the football field. They were running into nine-man fronts, could not get anything done on offense. Wright's going to have to hit some balls down the field. And Kyle Wright fires incomplete. That one tipped at the line of scrimmage by number 49, Chris Ellis. Now let's take a look at our starting lineups presented by Outback Steakhouse. There's a look at Ryan Moore getting the start. A surprise late announcement in place of Lance Leggett, who you saw on the sidelines a few moments ago. The three highlighted players there, James Shields and Jason Fox, underscoring the point that the Hurricanes are a very young team. They are three true freshmen getting the start tonight. Second down and ten. This is James making like his cousin Edgerin James, the former UM star here with a first down out to the 45-yard line, and he picked up a nice block from Ryan Moore along the way. Take a look now at the Hokies defensive unit. Their defense led by their linebackers, Brendan Hill, Vince Hall, and Xavier Adibi. Well, it has to be very encouraging for Miami, picking up a first down early on this first possession, running the football. Last week, Clemson, two talented backs in Davis and Spiller. They were averaging close to 200 combined going into that game. The Hokies flat shut them down. A little pressure coming from the Hokies. Wright under some heat. And Kyle Wright in a welcome sight for offensive coordinator Greg Olson, averting trouble there, avoiding the sack. And with a nice pickup, David, they were sacked six times last week. Well, and Kyle Wright's coming off a season a year ago where he was sacked 34 times. And Rich Olson, the offensive coordinator in the offseason, really made it a focal point to cut down on the sacks. They go with a little bit more short passing game and three-step drops this year. And I think Kyle Wright has to do more of what he did on that last play, helping out his offensive line. Second down and five after the five-yard gain from midfield. Right wide open to his tight end, Greg Olson. And Olson picks up the first down as we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Mark, here's a candidate for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. Maryland's Dan Ennis with a 31-yard field goal with nothing but zeros on the clock to get the Torrid Turf their fourth straight win and keep a share of the Atlantic Division lead. You want to vote? Text your vote. Pontiac game-changing performance, ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. What about Maryland hurting some people's feelings there? Here's James on first and 10. Got about a yard on the play, stopped by a DB. Now that was a masterful drive going back to that Maryland Clemson game earlier today. A masterful drive pioneered by Holland back to quarterback for Maryland coming down the field and getting that, that field goal and the reversal on the safety call on the prior possession by Clemson. The uh, drive that Clemson came up with points. Couldn't believe the officials up in the booth reversed that call. A two tight end formation here on second down and 10 for Miami. It's their opening offensive drive of the game. They try to set up the receiver screen, and it's incomplete, intended for Sam Shields. Javaris James, a very talented true freshman, one of three starting for Miami. He leads all ACC freshmen in rush yards coming into this game, and look where he compares in relation to those very uh, big names on the list. Porta score now in the NFL, Moss. And Edrin James. A pretty impressive list. And uh, a name missing off that list, of course, Willis McGahee, who didn't get quite as many minutes as a freshman here at Miami. There's some competition at that spot. <laughs> Every year. Third down and 10. Kyle Wright out of the shotgun. And they give up their first sack of the ball game, Xavier Adibi. And that takes them out of field goal range as well. Well, and that's what this Hokie defense tries to do to you. They try to get you behind the chains here, third and ten, and then they turn the pass rush loose. 
And watching Virginia Tech early in this football game, they're bringing some heat. They're bringing some blitzes from the linebacker level and the safety level, trying to rattle Kyle Wright early. Brian Monroe into punt, standing at his own 40-yard line. They're going to try and pooch this one. Actually, it's Petty. And Petty has it bounce into the end zone. And it'll come out to the 20-yard line. John Penny unable to get it inside the 10. Brandon Orr has two consecutive 200-plus yard rushing games. He is arguably the hottest tailback in the nation right now. We'll watch him go to work when we return to the Orange Bowl. Welcome back, everyone, to the city of Miami. They call it the Magic City because it popped up very quickly back in the day. This is Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Across the street from that marquee, you can get the best cup of Cuban coffee. Problem is, it'll keep you up all night. First down and 10 for Virginia Tech. Brandon Orr, the lone back. Eddie Royal in motion. They'll throw it. And Glennon gets rid of it incomplete, intended for Sam Wheeler, but good heat up front. Applied by Baraka Adam, Atkins. And Brian Pata was also hot on the heels of Glennon. And you know, the best time to get things done against this Miami defense, a defense that is also able to get extra men in the box, is typically on first and second down. Obvious run situations where you can play action and take your shots down the field. You have to make these defenses pay for the style of defense they play, both Miami and Virginia Tech. Lennon has a career high of 339 yards throwing. This time they run it, and Orr is stopped up by Atkins. Atkins played arguably his best game of the year last week against Georgia Tech. Graded out extremely high. There he is, number 98. He's a 6'4-inch, 275-pound senior. Now you look at Atkins and you look at Campbell, the two defensive ends, and this defensive front able to rotate fresh legs in as well. But you look at the two starting defensive ends for Miami, and they have NFL written all over them. Such has been the case throughout the years here in South Florida. Third and nine coming up for Virginia Tech. Glennon working out of the shotgun. Incomplete at the 25-yard line. The pass broken up by Chavez Grant. It was intended for Justin Harper. And it's three and out for Virginia Tech. Now Grant, a true freshman, comes in as the sixth defensive back for Miami. And you know you're playing pretty good defense when you're forcing third down pass attempts that are well short of the first down markers. And as a result, Nick Schmidt comes in to punt for George, uh, uh, Virginia Tech. Stands at his own seven. Bruce Johnson standing at midfield for Miami. And a good punt into the wind. Bounces out of bounds around the 40-yard line as Johnson watches it. Kyle Wright, the fourth-year junior, going to take the reins of the offense for Miami. He's had a lot to say this week in the players-only meeting. Now can his actions back up those words? We'll see how impassioned he is when we come back. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Singular, raising the bar. Hummer, like nothing else. And IBM, what makes you special? Look at the scenes down on South Beach, a glow at night here. And welcome back across the way at the Orange Bowl. First and 10 for Kyle Wright and Miami. The pass complete at the 43-yard line to Javaris James, the true freshman. Kyle Wright told me on Wednesday at practice that our only remedy is a win right now. That's all we can think about doing. We have a lot to play for still. And looking into his eyes, he could only believe what he was saying. Well, and, and he had some positive quotes during the week, but I thought he had a couple negative quotes in the paper. He said, I'm not sure whose job it is to get people to focus. And to me, there was some subtle finger pointing. I don't think you can ever afford, especially as a Miami quarterback, to point fingers in the press. And he did some of that subtly this week. Here's James on second and seven, powering ahead near the first mark down marker on the other side of midfield, Virginia Tech Port uh, territory. And we 
Hilton spoke of some of the words coming from Kyle Wright during the course of the week. Here's what he said. I don't know whose job it is to continually get guys to focus. If it's my job, I'm trying to stay on those guys as much as I can, and I know the coaches are. We've just got to focus. When it matters, we haven't been able to do it. And they've had some very uh, pivotal meltdowns at inopportune times, especially in the red zone. Well, Kyle Wright had his share of mistakes last week in a game that Miami had really had good control of in the first quarter and the third quarter. He had a key pick and, of course, a very key fumble in the fourth quarter. Third and one, Wright scrambling on the move. And he's going to stop short of the first down at the 50-yard line. Tried to make a move, but was stopped up by Chris Ellis, number 49, and Barry Booker as well. Well, you, down in one and you got to wonder and third and short after getting a nice run from Javaris James Why don't you line up under center and pound away with the true freshman running back? I mean rich Olsen He's attacking a very tough defense here a defense that loves to load up on the line of scrimmage, but sometimes you got to line up Put a fullback in front of your tailback and pound between the tackles to pick up third and short Betty into punts then pardon me. That's Monroe at the 40 Go back to Monroe. And he air mails it down to the 10. This one's going to hit and stick. It's going to be down at about the eight yard line. And Virginia Tech will have the ball when we come back after the 41 yard punt. Sometimes you just got to shake your moneymaker and make it work for you. That's what Virginia Tech and Miami are going to do when we come back. Finish set. Mark. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Back here, 439 to go in the first period. Zeros on the scoreboard. John Beeson in on defense at linebacker on this series for Miami, and they run it. Virginia Tech does with already stopped at the seven-yard line. Tomorrow, live final round coverage of the Tour Championship gets underway at noon Eastern on ESPN2, then at 1 Eastern, who's back here to ABC. See who's among a select field of the Tour's top money winners takes tomorrow on ABC. We have an injured player down in the field at the 10-yard line. Take a look at the leaderboard in that uh, Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola. Adam Scott, the leader by three strokes. DJ Singh, always dangerous, lurking just three shots back. Larry Coker in a sixth season at the University of Miami, and you step back and take a look at the big picture at what's happening at the university. He won the national championship in his first year, was the runner-up his second year. Since that time, he's gone 34 and 12. Yet, this is a coach right now under siege and beleaguered a little bit. Well, and how many coaches win a national title in their first tenure at a school and are even considered to be in trouble? And for my purposes, if you're evaluating Larry Coker, you say, hey, that those first two years are as good as two national championships not taking anything away from Ohio State or Jim Tressel but a call in the end zone to me yeah. I think in his dossier you have to include two national championships not one and that should buy you a little bit of time you would think second down and ten coming up for the Hokies Lennon audibling at the line into the boundary and it's ruled incomplete, intended for Josh Morgan. Glenn Sharp there on the coverage for the Kings. Well, and that's a, that's a good call by Brian Steinspring. And this is a tough spot. And the offensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, this is a tough spot for an offense. You know, Glennon's working into the wind. He's backed up against his own goal post. And on first and second down, you're going to have to take some shots down the field. Miami has already displayed that they are not going to allow Brandon Orr to get off early in this game. With Glennon, they don't quite have the mobility and the playmaking skills of running the ball that they had last year with Marcus Vick, but he is a good athlete. Third and ten. They hand it off, and nothing doing that time for the Hokies trying to run the ball or stopped up by Glenn Cook. And a three and out for Virginia Tech, the second one. Well, and if you're Miami, you want to keep a look at the clock here. You know, 320 and ticking down in the first quarter. You want to make sure that you take advantage of having the win yeah. on your side here in the first quarter. And you want to milk these last three minutes to get as many offensive plays as you can with Kyle Wright. Nick Schmidt running in the shadows of his own goalposts. And he's done a good job this quarter into the wind. From the 43-yard line, Johnson is stopped up immediately. 
Nothing on the return. David Clowney, good coverage on that 38-yard punt. Been some very pivotal, critical moments for Miami during the course of the season. This one symbolic last week in the fourth quarter against Georgia Tech. Reggie Ball hits Calvin Johnson with a touchdown. Tech up seven. Then the ensuing drive. Kyle Wright sacked, and he fumbles. Carmichael Hall recovers, and the Tech offense responds with a 25-yard touchdown run by Tashar Choice. And Georgia Tech goes on to win it, 30-23. to There was a costly fumble as well by the Hurricanes late in the game on a punt. First down and 10 for Miami with good field position. And the bootleg action fooled nobody. Right sacked by Brendan Hill. Well, this is what you worry about as a quarterback when you come out blind on a bootleg. And you're going to take a look at Kyle Wright and his action here on, on the play fake, and he runs right into Hill. And that's what you worry about as a quarterback. You come out on the naked bootleg or waggle action, and there's a linebacker staring you right in the face mask. Yeah, not a good thing. 2.08 to go in the first quarter. Miami with the wind at its back. Right, a little bit strong, incomplete. And it falls harmlessly at the 35-yard line. It was tipped by Carlton Powell at the line of scrimmage. Third down coming up for Miami in this hurricane offense uh, out of sorts right now. Well, and Kyle Wright really has been out of sorts. We talked about it at the top. Five of his last ten starts against Division I teams have been losses. We haven't seen that at Miami in a long time. And on that last play, a questionable throwing decision. He wasn't accurate with the ball. In fact, throughout this year, Mark Jones, Kyle Wright has really struggled at times with his accuracy. Here they come on third down and 20. Blitz coming by Virginia Tech. It's picked up, though. And a little miscommunication between Lance Leggett, the wide receiver, and Kyle Wright. It's fourth down and a shower of boos raining down on the Hurricanes now already. Well, Leggett was running a deep curl route, and I think Wright and Leggett were indeed on the same page. But you know, Kyle Wright is working with the wind. You've got to tone it down a little bit on your delivery. Strong wind behind him. Wright sees him all the way. Leggett's open. And that's an opportunity to move the chains on a third and long, and Kyle Wright missed it. Monroe punts a high one. And it takes a hurricane bounce. And a nice job this time by Monroe. It's going to be down inside the 10-yard line with 1.40 to go in the first period. Well, Monday night, Deion Branch and the NFC champion Seahawks welcome Randy Moss and the Oakland Raiders to Seattle as the two teams are a new and old rivalry. Is it Monday yet? Monday night football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern and also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Mike Baldwin's team got off to a very hot start. It's since uh, cooled off a little bit. And uh, Sean Exale Alexander has missed four consecutive games. Some uh, question as to whether he's going to be ready or not. And also missing one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the game, and Matt Hasselbeck as well. First down and 10 for the Hokies. Or over the right side of that offensive line. Got about three on the play. You look back to Miami's loss last week against Georgia Tech in a game where the Hurricanes could really take control of the Coastal Division, control their own destiny towards that ACC championship game. And, you know, this team really dominated Georgia Tech in the first half, came out with a defensive touchdown on the first play, and then they dominated the third quarter, but they have not been able to take advantage of their opportunities. Tonight, two possessions where they've been in Hokies territory, no points. They can't afford to let opportunities go by the board. Second and eight. Out of the backfield or. Nice catch and a nice move or two. Stopped on a dime. Didn't leave the Canes any change. And or out to the 27-yard line. A missed tackle on the play by Grant. And a pickup of 13 yards for Virginia Tech on that play. Brandon Orr has back-to-back 200-yard -back rushing games, and it's interesting the way that he has really morphed into not only a great player but an outstanding citizen as well, really appreciative of the opportunities that he has. He underwent surgery last year, left the team, shoulder surgery, went back home and ended up working at 7-Eleven, packing meat into a freezer. Became a lot more thankful of his opportunities on the field after that. 
Uh, first back in Virginia Tech history to go over 200 yards in consecutive games. There he is up the middle between the tackles out to the 31 yard line where John Beeson makes the stop on the play. Beeson back in action. Played just three snaps last week because of an injured knee. Brandon Orr, no points on the board so far, but the good news is neither do his counterparts from Miami. The thoughtful pose of the Hurricanes, a pensive Frank Beamer. Our presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations from watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back, everyone, to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines. Making the sign of the U, Miami, scoreless so far, along with Virginia Tech. The Hokies with the footballers. We start the second quarter, 0-0. John Glennon at quarterback. Neither team able to move the ball very well so far. Second down and seven. Glennon. Tries to run it and is brought down at the 30-yard line by Kareem Brown as we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Mark, let's get a check of our primetime polls. On ESPN, Arkansas, the only SEC team with an unblemished conference record, is on the road at South Carolina and leading right now on ESPN2. A battle for control of the Atlantic Division along with Maryland, B.C. and Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons up by a touchdown in the third. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. And you think about BC, that was really a defining and indelible point of Virginia Tech season a few weeks ago. We'll talk about that in a bit. That last sack, Miami's 20th. They almost had their 21st, a blitz coming by Chavez Grant. Good pressure. And they dialed up some heat. It's fourth down coming up for the Hokies. They'll punt. Well, the Hurricanes are able to dial up heat because they have the luxury of cornerbacks on the outside that can run with the best receivers in the land. Miami, great play from the defensive ends this year, and Grant, the dime back, coming on a blitz. Glennon has been under fire, and a big, big part of Glennon's job tonight is to be safe with the football. There are going to be some canceled plays from time to time against this Hurricane defense. Nick Schmidt with his fourth punt of the evening under the lights, and Bruce Johnson calls for the fair catch of the 28. Miami has yet to return a punt or a kickoff for a touchdown this year. Johnson on the 42-yard punt returns at four yards. Well, we talked about Virginia Tech's loss this year to Boston College. It was a defining point in the season. In the fourth quarter, with BC up 13-3, Matt Ryan threw a touchdown to Kevin Challenger. And then look what ensues afterwards. Vince Hall and Aaron Rouse get into a heated discussion on the sidelines following the touchdown now they argue that hey we weren't arguing we're just trying to work it out well the point of the matter is Frank Beamer showed them the videotape and he was upset with what was perceived their lack of ability to react to the adversity there's James on the run and James is stopped up at the 33 yard line by flowers but that proved to be a turning point that incident because they since have had a team meeting, said that, hey, every game now is as important as Game 7 of the World Series. That's the way that they're approaching it. Well, Virginia Tech was coming off not only one loss there to Boston College, but two consecutively. And there, let's face it, there was some finger pointing going on down on the sidelines. There was a bust in the secondary that freed Challenger up for that game deciding touchdown but you know the same type of finger pointing going on in that game that our Stacy Dales talked about with the Hurricanes in the open tonight. Yes. Moss in the backfield and the pass complete. Kyle Wright fires to Rashawn Jones. Jones's forward progress going to be marked at the 37 yard line. You know Mark we were talking about it earlier this week and you made a great point that you know, Virginia Tech had a defining moment, and they've been able to turn things around, and that's that's a challenge that the Hurricanes are facing. Yes, uh, everybody knows that this is the first home game since the now infamous fight between Miami and FIU several weeks ago. And the Hurricanes uniting still. It's a work in progress since that time. Third down and five coming up for Kyle Wright. Pass incomplete and a great stick on Tyrone Moss by Brandon Flowers. Flowers made a heck of a play and Flowers is coming in as that boundary cornerback in the wake of Jimmy Williams. Now a 
cash in his stack in the NFL. Three and out for Miami. Well, and Kyle Wright here, this is not a solid decision as well because Kyle Wright is looking outside to Moss. Moss can't look up Flowers, the cornerback. Wright has to be his eyes, and Kyle Wright led him right into a hard spot there with the cornerback. No shot to pick up a first down on that throwing choice. Monroe punts from his own 22. Beamer ball not yet in effect. They haven't blocked a kick or come close tonight. The punt comes down to the 26-yard line. Well, sometimes, you know, if you get a little length, a little height, run a little fade route to this guy, that's six for sure. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Is that minute ball? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Crowd's rocking. There are about 4,000 Hokie fans that made the trip. That's how many tickets they sold. A breezy Orange Bowl tonight, but uh, neither team's offense I'm surrounding much offense. First down and 10, a flag down of the play, or with a nice hole up the middle. Brought down to the 35 yard line, but will this play stand? Now, who would have ever thought, David, back in September and looking at this game, that it wouldn't be for the division title in the Coastal Division in the ACC? Well, that's why they play the games. And offsides against the Hurricanes. Nice chunk picked up there by Brand Noor, but you know, the so called experts, you read the preseason magazines. Oh, Defense, number 81. That penalty is repeated. Second down. You read the preseason magazines, and most everybody had this game circled. You know, November 4th, Virginia Tech, Miami. In fact, you, you talk about a big game. A year ago, Virginia Tech was sitting at 8 and 0, number three behind Texas and USC. And Miami went up to Blacksburg and laid a smackdown on him. I mean, it was a thorough beating, 27 to 7. Virginia Tech, hard to think that they don't have some payback on their minds tonight. A second and one, Glennon with play action, going up top into the teeth of that secondary, and the Hurricanes outnumbering David Clowney. But there's a flag down on the players. You have to wonder if that might have been uncatchable. That's what. Head coach Larry Coker is saying uh, for Miami. It was, and Larry Coker's right. That ball was overthrown by a good 10 yards. Keep in mind, Glennon's got a pretty strong wind at his back. David Clowney, a 200-meter sprint champ in the ACC. On the Virginia Tech track team, that's the good news. The good news for Miami is that those guys in the secondary are also on the track team. The foul on the field is still waved off. Pass is rule uncatchable. That's the ruling. The ball was uncatchable, and Javaris James leaving the field. Not a good sign for Miami. Might have been why we saw Tyrone Moss in that last series. James, the talented true freshman, leads all freshmen in rushing in the ACC. Third down and one for Virginia Tech. Out of the eye, Orr. And Orr gets the first down for the Hokies. Out of the 38-yard line. Bar is good in making the stop. Those guys up front doing a nice job that time. And uh, Brandon Gore filling in for Ryan Schumann this week on that offensive line. Ryan Schumann underwent surgery on Tuesday on his knee. And he was really a bright light on that offensive line. Nick Marshman now filling in as a utility guy along that offensive line as well. And Gore's been a bright spot. Replacing Schumann and played pretty big when he came in last week. He's not a guy who's a stranger to the offensive line. He's played in quite a few games for the Hokies. Little draw play. Or breaks a couple of tackles. Nice gain out to the 47 as we go back to Matt Weiner in New York. Hi, right, Mark. Let's get a Taco Bell update from Rally. Georgia Tech leads the Coastal Division ahead of Virginia Tech and Miami. And they can really put a clamp on it with a win tonight. Reggie Ball's already hit Calvin Johnson for a couple touchdown passes. This is James Johnson. It goes to halftime 21-13. Also at the half in Austin where Colt McCoy has tied the Texas single season touchdown pass record with his 26. Vince who? <laughs> Not so fast. <laughs> Second down Not and one. Not so fast. Brandon Orr. Orr brought down at the 50-yard line. One thing about Brandon Orr. You saw him break one tackle on that play. He broke a couple on the previous play. Last week, when you look at the tape against Clemson, 
he broke 13 tackles. Now, I'm not Phi Beta Kappa, not even a position coach, a running back coach, but that seems that's like an inordinate number. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of tackles <laughs> for one game. That's a lot of tackles for one season. But, but Brandon Orr is the best combination of running back in terms of skills. He's a guy who can make you miss and run through tackles. First down and 10 after his last carry. Don Glennon looking at the sidelines for the call. They feel they have the necessary playmakers at wide receiver. But this play going to be whistled dead. And Sean Glennon might not have picked up the 25 second clock. Offense, number seven. That's a five yard penalty. Um, when a quarterback breaks a huddle, that's the quarterback's responsibility. That's on Sean Glennon. When you break the huddle, you train your eyes on that 25-second clock. And granted, he's got a defensive front he needs to worry about. He's trying to get his team to the right plays up on the line of scrimmage, using a lot of audibles here in the first half. But you can never lose sight of that game clock five-yard penalty. The first one of the ball game. Glennon hands it off to Orr. Or brought down just shy of midfield by John Beeson. Or responsible for 90% of the Hokies' rushing yardage. That too an inordinate number. Well, and he's he's a workhorse. They give him a lot of carries, and yeah, you know, there's been more one more than one guy out there you know, that follows Virginia Tech football and says, hey, you look at him physically, only going about 202 pounds when the number of carries going to start wearing on his body. And they've always had a tandem of backs that have done a nice job. This year, seemingly, it's just him. That almost a lateral out of bounds. And it's incomplete intended for Brandon Orr. Well, and, and you go back to the game a week ago, Virginia Tech working against Clemson, a, a defensive front that's one of the best in the country as well against the run. And I think Frank Beamer and his offensive coordinator, Brian Steinspring, were very patient with the run. They didn't have a lot of running room with Brandon Orr early in that football game, but they were patient. They were stubborn about running the football. And as they have done on this drive, some Mark Jones, they started to loosen things up right. on the ground a bit as the game went on. Lennon just two of eight so far for 19 yards. He's looking at third and ten from near midfield. With the wind at his back, Lennon completes it. And a nice move at the 35 to the fullback, Allen. And Allen with a nice conversion on third and long down to the Miami 22 yard line. A 28 yard pickup on the play, and Brandon Merriweather missed a tackle. Merriweather, one of those leaders in the secondary for the Canes. Well, Frank Beamer is going to watch the tape tomorrow of this game, and he's going to watch Sean Glennon on a very impressive play and say, hey, my quarterback made a heroic effort on this. Look at him pull up. Now he's about to get sacked there, and he raises his eyes up. Brandon Merriweather was closing in, missed the tackle. Well, that is an impressive play by Glennon to scramble and then get his eyes up and hit an open man downfield on a big play. Running up on first and 10 out of the eye. They run it, and Orr is dragged down at the 19-yard line. You saw the reaction of Larry Coker on that missed tackle. You almost uh, read his lips saying, come on, Brandon. Brandon Merriweather, an All-American candidate at the beginning of the season. Of course, uh, he was front and center in that brawl against FIU. And uh, folks, I can tell you, I'm in the barbershop with a lot of these kids and their parents on Mondays and Tuesdays. I'm a resident of South Florida. I live in the 305 area, though. These are good kids on the whole that did one bad thing. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Tenth play of the Virginia Tech drive goes to Orr, who's brought down at the 22-yard line. There's a flag down on the play as well as John Beeson makes the stop for yeah. Miami. That's an impressive play by Beeson to diagnose the screen play. Gets upfield and beats those offensive linemen to the punch. Penalty going to go against Miami. In the neutral zone, offsides against the Hurricanes. And you know, Miami fans probably thinking right now more of the same. This is the most penalized team in the ACC. Defense. Number 81. It's a five yard penalty. Still second down. Well, coming up on the Capital One halftime show, John Saunders, Craig James, Doug Flutie will have highlights and analysis from all of today's big games, including the two top teams in the country. And LSU at Tennessee, a busy Saturday in college football as the clock ticks.
down towards the national championship. Michigan with a little bit of a scare today against Ball State. Second and three coming up for Virginia Tech. Blitz coming by Miami. And it's incomplete. No flag on the play. It was intended for Josh Morgan. And Randy Shannon once again dialed up some pressure. Glenn Sharp batted it down. A flag. He thought that his guy was draped. Well, Glenn Sharp played the end of this play fairly aggressively. Pass rush closing in on Glennon. Let's take another look from this angle. Sharp going up. Go ahead and roll it. And it looked like Sharp was draped on the back of Morgan there before the ball arrived. I think Beamer had reason. Third and three, play action. Glennon out of bounds, incomplete. And Glenn Sharp again defending the play for Miami. So the Hurricane defense comes up and good pressure up front by Daryl Sharpton as well. Fourth down, Glennon on to the sidelines. And Brandon Pace coming in for a field goal attempt with the wind at his back. That's a big stop for the Hurricanes defense to force a field goal try. This figures to be a low scoring game. The two defenses, top 10 defenses in the country. So hard to run the ball against either one of these defenses. And then you add that wind on field level. Really makes it tough to throw the ball. This coming from 32 yards out. He's made his last 14 in a row. Make that 15 now. He's 11 of 11 on the season. Dating back to last year, it's been 15 straight. He has been cash money, but a moral victory of sorts for the Kane defense. You're watching ESPN's Saturday Night Football on ABC. Our All-State Good Hands flashback. In 2001, Boston College was looking to upset unbeaten Miami. Down by five in the final minute, Brian St. Pierre's pass ricocheted into the hands of Hurricane defensive tackle Matt Walters. Walters ran 10 yards before teammate Ed Weed grabbed the ball and outran defenders to the end zone. The win brought Miami to 8-0 and one step closer to the national title. Bergwood, you're on the goalpost truck, you're on the car, I'm on lookout. Bergwood, are you wearing spandex? Yeah, I got them out of my mom's drawer. It's very sexy. You think? No. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Oh. This is gonna look great in my yard. Bergwood? Is the strength of Allstate behind your favorite college football team? What's up? Steve Wade. I can use some help. It's <laughs> heavy. Yes, it is. My dream is to leave the world a better place than I found it. Good job, buddy. Yo! Hey, coach. The new 2007 Lincoln Navigator with enough room for a basketball team. Life's going. Where to next? Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Lincoln, reach higher. Outback Steakhouse, let go of the day. Go Outback tonight. And Aflac, ask about it at work. Look at the old Versace mansion on South Beach, Ocean Drive and 11th Street. Tell you folks, if you bring David Nori and Stacey Dales with you, you can get behind any red velvet rope on South Beach. I thought I had juice. Yeah, South Beach is our specialty. I mean, it's, <laughs> I always love coming into Miami. My human passports. Whether it's the Delano or the Shore Club, <laughs> you always feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia Tech to kick off after the 12 play 59 yard drive, which was capped with a 32 yard field goal. And it'll go over the head of the return team and they'll come out to the 20. Well, now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. And this week's question, Mr. Duff. Aflac. Thank you. Blacksburg, Virginia is one of two cities home to an ACC football stadium that has never recorded a 100 degree temperature. 
Where do we get these? What is the other city? 100 degree. I'm going to put in a call to the Weather Channel. I'm going to text them and find out what's up. Are you telling me there's never been a 100 degree temperature in Boston? Because Boston would be my guess. Yes, but furthest north, right? Yeah, but Boston, they had to have a 100 degree day somewhere. We have Kirby Freeman now in a quarterback for Miami. Larry Coker told us earlier that he had a plan in which Freeman would enter the game, although he didn't want to put him in under adverse circumstances and have him backed up too much. Here's Freeman working out of the shotgun, hands it off. And a nice run by Freeman, and it's fumbled. Loose ball. A DB made the hit, and Miami recovers Greg Olson. And Kirby Freeman kept it and kept going. Now what a play by Olsen to make the recovery downfield. And just looked like he took it away from Xavier Adibi. They faked the underneath handoff out of the shotgun. Freeman, remember Freeman played a pretty big role in this game a year ago in the second quarter up at Blacksburg. That was Adibi that got the strip. And then watch Greg Olsen make a great play Looked like he out hustled where to the football there. Tremendous play by the tight end. A 31 yard pickup. As Kyle Wright watching now from the sidelines. Charlie Jones in a tailback, and Jones takes the handoff from Freeman. And he makes it down to the 48 yard line where he's stopped by Brendan Hill. So, what do you make of the quarterbacking change at this time? Well, you say Larry Coker didn't want to get Freeman into a situation that was adverse. Yeah. And you put a quarterback in against the number three <laughs> defense in the country. I'd say that's an adverse situation. But, you know, in the ACC, week in and week out, tough to find a situation that's comfortable for a young quarterback. And I think it finally has happened here. Coker's sending a bit of a signal to Kyle Wright. Kirby Freeman is a six foot three inch, 215 pound sophomore. We have an issue down on the field with one of the officials. Looks like he is has some sort of leg injury being checked out by one of the trainers boy this is a day for leg injuries uh, Joe Paterno hit on the sidelines of one of our earlier games well and when you're an umpire you're right in the middle of all the traffic and all the noise at the linebacker level Ron Tom Laverde our umpire yeah it looked like he was trying to be a run stuffer there get <laughs> Getting up into the play. He got chopped by uh, Corey Robertson. And sometimes in an umpire, there's no no direction to go, no place to be. It's going to be safe down there. But now Larry Coker a bit wound up. And you know, Miami, sooner or later, is going to have to establish a threat down the field. They're going to have to take a few shots. You know, last week against Georgia Tech, once they went down the field to Lance Leggett, almost hit on a deep ball. The Miami, until they establish a threat throwing the football, especially on some deep balls, Virginia Tech's going to continue to load up the line of scrimmage. They're looking at second down and nine. Will it be Leggett? Will it be Moore, who's playing his first game of the season? They hand it off. It's Jones. And Jones does well just to get back to the line of scrimmage right near midfield. Running east-west as we check in up north with New York. Hi, Mark. A Liberty Mutual update. We check in in North Carolina. Winston-Salem, to be exact, biggest home game in, in years for Wake Forest. Trying to take control of the Atlantic Division in the ACC against BC. And that's Kevin Marion, 81 yards. It's a 21-7 Demon Deacon lead. All right, Matt, third and ten coming up for Miami. The first series of the ball game for the new quarterback, Kirby Freeman. Freeman into the wind, picked off at the 40. Brandon Flowers, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 37-yard line. That thing hung up into the wind. And it's the first turnover of the ball game in favor of the Hokies, their 12th interception of the season. You could see that thing flutter in the air. Yeah, and there's no good time to get a backup quarterback in a game that's a must-win game for Miami. The delivery wasn't exactly clean. Pressure in the pocket. Freeman, not a good throwing decision. And you see that ball come out like the Hubble telescope. <laughs> not very good ballistics. 
And Miami really lucky that Flowers didn't take that all the way back for six. This is the best starting field position of the day now for Virginia Tech. First down and ten with four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Max lining up out of the eye. Play fake. Glennon has a man complete. That's Morgan. And Morgan still on his feet. Wow, he moved the pack about five yards, but there's a flag on the play. Josh Morgan. They call him the man child because of his physical gifts in and the man child really moved the pile. Let's talk about yards after contact. Picked up 30 and all, but will it stand? And the penalty going to go against Miami. Yeah, it looks a like it's going to be a five yarder. Move it halfway to the goal. On the play, have a face mask, five yards. After this is to the goal, number four defense. Now we talked about the quarterback making the most plays in this football game. It's probably going to decide the result. And this is an impressive ball from Glennon. Nice job by Morgan to sit down on that skinny post in the void. And let's take a look at a face mask right there yep. at the end of the play. First and goal from the three. Or. Stopped up at the line of scrimmage. May have gotten half a yard on the play. McCray making the stop for the Canes. The last time Virginia Tech got this deep, they were stopped by Miami's defense and had to settle for a field goal. That's the margin on the scoreboard right now. 3-0 with 3.43 to go in the first half. Well, and with Virginia Tech's defense and the way they've been playing, they've been playing lights out. Almost impossible to run the ball against this Hokies defense. You don't want to fall down behind this game by 10 points. Tough outfit to come back against. Those are the ball of the two yard line. Second and goal. Or with a nice move. He broke the tackle and scored. Touchdown Hokies. Brandon Orr with his 12th rushing touchdown this season. The 18th of his career. And his coaches talk about that jump Let's cut. Go! That jump cut ability, he used all of it to score on that play. Yeah, Eric Moncour, he experienced the jump cut. Missed tackle in the backfield. Moncour should have had him for a loss. The Hokies leading 10 to nothing with 3.17 to go in the first half. This was the play that set up the touchdown. Brandon Flowers' interception of Kirby Freeman. And then Brandon Orr with lateral mobility. Virginia Tech with the lead. When we come back, you're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back, everyone. And now let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines playbook. Well, Eric Moncour, the defensive end. This is not the angle you want to take. The angle you want to take to keep your containment on Brandon Orr is the yellow. Follow the yellow arrow. Moncour doesn't. He gets caught inside. And Brandon Orr way too strong. And Brandon Orr has made a name for himself this year, breaking arm tackles. And as a defensive end, you've got to maintain your shape. Miami was in great shape defensively to stop that running play and force a third and goal. Brandon Orr from Tidewater, Virginia, Chesapeake High School. Ironically, the uh, same high school as Alonzo Mourning, a resident of Miami. All right, watching from the sidelines. Who will it be at quarterback? Raymond or Wright? We'll find out in a moment. Earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Blacksburg, Virginia, one of two cities home to an ACC football stadium that has never recorded a 100-degree temperature. What is the other city? Let, let's go with it's Chestnut be, Hill, Massachusetts. Gotta Boston be, College, right? Got to be Beantown, right? Oh, come, come on. Come on. That's I mean, a trick throwing. question. That's some wicked stuff. They that's must a, have taken it slider. They must have taken the temperature by the beach instead of inland because you know you got the moderating temperature and the effect of the water. Did I sound like a meteorologist? You there? cannot question the <laughs> National Oceanic and Atmospheric <laughs> Group. Kyle Wright back in at quarterback. Freeman after the interception will watch this series from the sidelines. Tyrone Moss on the carry. 
Moss in the ball game because uh, Tavares James left for the locker room a little bit earlier. Talked about Chestnut Hill and the temperatures there. Uh, getting a little cooler because Wake is heating them up right now. 21 to 7. That pivotal game in the ACC's Atlantic Division. Yeah, on the road at Wake and Wake really one of the top two or three surprises in college football this year and, and looking to take a leg up in the Atlantic Division. Can you imagine Wake Forest getting wow. that ACC championship game in Jacksonville? Jim Grove doing a great job there during his tenure. Second and five. Right hands it off. And Moss with a nice burst over the middle and Tyrone Moss with a first down to the 41 yard line. You know he's an interesting story. He blew out his knee in this very game last year against Virginia Tech. And he was on pace at the time to get over 1200 yards rushing. But since that surgery he's come back and been a little bit out of shape. Still a little bit fleshy. He could lose a few pounds maybe but nice effort there. He came back in in 10 months. Well, we talked about the patience that the Hokies have used running the ball. I don't think Miami's been patient enough in situations staying with the ground game. James had some success early in this football game. That pass incomplete at the 42 yard line. And for more on Javaris James, we go to Stacy downstairs. Well, Mark, who better to ask than uh, the edge himself, Edger and James? Uh, just talk to Javaris. Tell us about his injury real quick. He got a hip point in the I guess he just took a good shot. In the hip, you know, so it's like a pain tolerance thing. He said it hit him pretty good. And I think this is his first one that he's experienced, so. <laughs> I said, um, he'll be all right, you know, but I don't, Thursday's doing pretty good right now, so just let it wear off. He just took some, um, took a couple shots with some pain killing shots, so he should be all right, second half. Mark will catch up after this play. All right, Stacy. I'd like to see if he can come back into the game. Right fires incomplete. At the 47 yard line, a flag on the play. Intended, intended for Greg Olson. Greg Olson is incomplete. Against Miami, we go back to Stacy and Edge. Edge, and I have to ask you, uh, your cousins had a lot of success here thus far as a freshman. What do you attribute that to? It's just hard working and paying attention to everything that's going on. Yeah. And he know what he's here for. You know, that's the main thing. You know, he don't let up. He know what he's here for. And he's working real hard and he's living up to everything that we've always expected of him. Mark, take it away. All right, Stacy. Both of them residents of Immokalee, Florida, a little farming community just off I-75, about an hour from here. Edron has a workout facility with full weight room, basketball courts, video games, computers. They call it the fun house. And Edron, of course, is notorious for those 3 a.m. morning workouts. It works for him. <laughs> Second and 15. Right fires completed the 43. Right. To Sam Shields, back to Stacey and Edrin. Edrin, I, I have to ask you, there's a lot of buzz around uh, the program about the three losses. Where do you think the state of Miami football is? I don't know. We just got to get back to where, where we used to play football, and that's where it really boils down to. Right now, you know, you never know. You don't know what's really going on. You know, really don't know what what to pinpoint why we're not having success but I know with this city and you know with the history that we have we'll get it together sooner or later you know we're we're gonna keep fighting until we figure out what happened because you know we're one of the dominant schools and everybody wants to come here and play and it'll be back on top sooner than later well Mark we appreciate Edron joining us and hope he can get his Cardinals back on track Yes, uh, they're struggling a little bit right now. And uh, speaking of Javaris James, Edron's uh, younger cousin, it's ironic that Javaris David, when they have running back meetings, he meets in the Edron James conference room on campus because uh, Edron, through his wonderful philanthropy, has donated uh, about a quarter of a million dollars to, to the U. Yeah, it's nice when the uncle's making what they call mad dollars down here in Miami in the 305. But. You know, Javaris James was having a lot of success early in this football game. I thought Miami got away from the run in situations where they could have continued to pound the ball. They lined up in a shotgun on a critical third and one out near midfield. And yeah. I think they found now with Moss replacing James that this Miami team is having some success against the eight and nine man fronts against Virginia Tech. So. Now you do not want to completely abandon your run game, even with the numbers on the line of scrimmage with Virginia Tech, even when you're trailing by 10 points. Kyle Wright is 4 of 10. And he tries to pass here through a dart. 
complete for the first down on the other side of midfield at the 47-yard line. Lance Leggett hung on to it. Now, when you see him throw a ball like that, you wonder, why don't we get that all the time from Kyle Wright? Well, we, he, we got two balls on consecutive plays, and both comeback outs, both along the right sideline. Nobody ever doubted that Kyle Wright had the tools. I mean, he looks like a million dollars in warm-ups, but from time to time, his accuracy gets away from him. Those are two balls dead into a 20-mile-an-hour win. Flags down to the play. Movement by Jason Fox. Ball start, 64, offense. That's a five-yard penalty. We talk about Kyle Wright, and you said that he's right out of central casting for quarterback 6'4", 220. If this guy were a computer, he'd have all the hardware. It's just the software that's still a work in progress. Well, and, and you can't blame Kyle Wright for all the problems on offense. We just saw Jason Fox, the true freshman, move early. Those are killers when you're facing first and 15, going against the wind against this uh, one of the top three defenses in the country. But when Wright has it going and he gets back and he gets his feet set, he's a dangerous passer. Throwing out of the shotgun. Wright throws it out of bounds. Paul Wright told me at practice a few days ago that uh, they tried a little team bonding activity a couple of weeks ago. He and Javaris James took that offensive line who were coming up a couple of good performances. They've won four of their last five. People forget that. Took their offensive line to uh, Hooters for some chicken wings. Yeah, you always... Ate know. up a storm. <laughs> yeah, offensive line always appreciates a free meal. That's no surprise. But, you know, on that last play, you, you, Kyle Wright, this is his 21st start. He had the ability to keep the ball there for a, a three or three or four-yard gain down the sideline, step out of bounds, stop the clock. Instead, he throws the ball away. I mean, he could easily be facing second and 12, maybe second and 11 on this play. Instead, it's second and 15. 114 to go underneath. Pass complete. Ryan Moore makes his first reception of the season. Ryan Moore in the ball game. He was suspended going back to last season. Back to the second last game of the regular season last year for some off-field incidents that he's been involved with. Third down and 12. Look at Ryan Moore. The school satisfied with the information that was they received from the state's attorney office and he will enter a pre-trial diversion program and he is back on the field in full effect there was a question about what kind of condition he please would be reset. In. 49 seconds 49 seconds please ryan moore has been practi practicing actively with the team over the last two weeks and they said he may you have a problem getting winded deep into this game, but you know, you sense the frustration of the Miami fans. They have got to get some balls down the field. They have not threatened the field vertically in the passing game. He's at the bottom of your screen, right? Taking a shot downtown for Leggett. Incomplete, a lot of contact, but no flag on the play. Brandon Flowers, who had an interception earlier, pumping up the volume on Lance Leggett. And it was Leggett that came under fire last week for watching the ball go over his head against Georgia Tech. Well, you watched that entire game a week ago. They only took one shot down the field on a post route to Lance Leggett. And, you know, even though they don't hit this ball, and even though they're trailing by 10 points, they need to take more shots like that one down the field. Even when you don't hit it, you're going to pump some air into this defense, and you're going to give those safeties for the Hokies second thoughts about coming up and putting their nose in there against the run game. Whistle blows before the punt. Timeout down to the field called by the Hurricanes. We're going to call one, too. You're watching ESPN on ABC under the lights at the Orange Bowl. I want a front door that makes a great first impression for years and years. You can at the Home Depot with Feather River entry doors. They're made of fiberglass, so they won't dent, rust, or rot, but they have the warmth and beauty of wood. And now Feather River is introducing interior wood doors. Plus get 20% off all special order Feather River doors. Feather River doors, exclusively at the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Oh. This is not what smart travelers oh. do. <laughs> 
but this is. Go to thrifty.com for our absolute lowest rates. Guaranteed. Thrifty.com. Book smart. Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Warm flatbread covered in three melted cheeses. Wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. It's a textural taste sensation. To get crunchy, chewy, and cheesy, think outside the bun. Once Susie and I retire, we'll be taking trips like this whenever we want. It's a good thing we've been planning. At Pacific Life, giving you the right tools to help you meet your financial goals is what we're all about. As you look to the future, look to Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And welcome back, everyone, to the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Fourth down and 12, Brian Monroe to punt for Miami. Virginia Tech over the years, one of the best schools at blocking punts. Not this time. Monroe airmails one at the 11 yard line. It's fielded cleanly, but there's a flag on the play. A 37 yard punt. Nikos Brown. Yeah, they got to Monroe, but I think this is going to be a five yarder. Yeah. It's a five yard penalty in defense. Oh, boy. And Monroe doing his best to draw a 15 yarder, but. And Monroe talked to the referee, and he's off the field right now. He got the news from the ref. It was only going to be a five-yarder. Talk about it. That's like a touch foul in basketball. <laughs> you know, it only takes a touch foul against a kicker to pick up a five-yarder. 29 seconds to go in the first half. Frank Beamer has to be pretty darn excited. I know Larry Coker isn't, but Frank Beamer has to be excited. Just the climb. First about going into this halftime into the locker room with a 10 point lead. This is the way that Virginia Tech has been winning football games here at their resurgence, Mark Jones. And it's all about stopping the run, playing defense, and running the football. And you know, Larry Coker talked about getting Kirby Freeman into the game in a situation where it wouldn't hurt his offense. Turns out they were not pushing the right buttons. Yeah, that one interception proved to be costly, set up the Brandon Orr touchdown. 25 seconds to go in the first half. Clock management, uh, a big issue today. What about that Wisconsin game? Brett Bielema finding a way to uh, a circumvent the rules a little bit. He found a loophole. <laughs> Tender, like your accountant, Mark Jones. Hey. <laughs> Larry Coker right now, a coach under siege. His program reeling just a little bit at five and three as we go downstairs to Stacy. Coach, why did you decide to go with uh, Kirby in the second quarter? Well, we had a plan to get him, get him in regardless of what the score was, and he needs some playing time. Did a nice job of the run. The turnover obviously hurt us badly, but, uh, you know, we're not, uh, we're not, we don't have any offense. We've got, to, we've got to generate some offense, obviously. What specifically offensively do you do, Coach, to find the end zone? Well, again, we've got to establish something in the run, and we've got to be a bit more efficient in the passing game. What do you think about your defense so far? Well, defense is playing well. They're playing well enough to win. We just got to help them out with their offense. Okay, thanks, Coach. Back up to you, Mark. All right, Larry Coker, the coach on the hot seat right now. He needs an asbestos suit. The eyes, the windows to the soul. And right now, Miami playing, trying to play with a lot of it. Trailing Virginia Tech. We'll be joining John Saunders, Craig James, and the gang. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Virginia Tech leading Miami 10 to nothing as we get ready for the start of the third quarter here at the Orange Bowl under the lights. Fifth Avenue and 16th Street here in the city of Miami. Hello everybody I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie we join Stacy Dales down on the field in just a few moments Virginia Tech with a 10 to nothing lead and you go back to three weeks ago a little bit of trouble a little bit of dissension amongst the troops at Virginia Tech they end up getting past that and then now, two games later, they're looking at maybe doing some good things. Well, I think they have a chance to get themselves into a great bowl game. But first things first, they got to take care of business in the second half against Miami. I think the quarterback, Sean Glennon, has been the difference. He was only 4 for 12 in the first half, but he had a couple big completions, got off to a slow start when they were working into the win. But his two big pass plays have really been the difference in this football game. And Sean Glennon making some uh, elusive plays with his feet as well and uh, some timely plays. Frank Beamer's team uh, looking well, just to win this one out, and they need a little bit of help. 
in the division. They need help from Georgia Tech in order to entertain any thoughts of playing in that ACC championship game in Jacksonville. As Miami won the toss, they had deferred to the second half, and they'll receive here in the second half. I'll start off from their own 24-yard line. And Stacey Dales, what did Coach Beamer have to say at the half? Well, Mark, Coach Beamer talked about the wind. It's still pretty gusty down here on the field. And he was most proud of his team in the first half for going against the wind and holding Miami scoreless. He's really excited that they'll have the wind behind them in the fourth quarter. And he really feels, guys, that his team is getting stronger as the, go as the game goes on. All right, and uh, Virginia Tech, a team that uh, has played some clutch football in the last couple. First and ten. Kyle Wright in the ball game at quarterback hands it off. That's Tyrone Moss in the ball game. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, some of the cogent points of the game so far. Well, and we heard Larry Coker at halftime talk about we need to get some consistency out of the run game. I don't think Miami really was patient enough to stick with the run game. Javaris James had some success early in the first quarter. Tyrone Moss had some success in the second quarter, but the Hurricanes only ran the ball nine times in the first half. Second down and nine after the one-yard gain. Here's Tyrone Moss. And Moss is going to be brought down at about the 27-yard line by Barry Booker. Tyrone Moss, 5'9", 232-pound senior. Held to Miami to 99 total yards in the first half of play. Just five first downs and one of seven on third downs. Well, and, and you, you cannot abandon your run game, but again, against a team that's daring you to throw the football, you can get the most damage done on first and second down. These are the situations, third and long, that Kyle Wright and his offense want to avoid. You'd think that they have to do something with the wind that they're back in this period. Wright overshoots his intended receiver over the middle. It was intended for Sam Shields, the true freshman, and uh, symbolic of the way things have gone. Uh, not quite losing their helmet, maybe losing their heads a little bit here. Fourth down, and in comes the punting unit. You know, Chris Rutledge has come in at left tackle for Reggie Youngblood, and Rutledge is having trouble at left tackle against this Virginia Tech front. Bud Foster, you know, he figured to bring some pressure against Kyle Wright tonight, and he's continuing to bring it. Monroe gets off a long punt. Fair catch called at the 30-yard line. A 42-yard punt as Royal calls for the fair catch. A three and out for the Hurricanes as Sean Glennon now takes the reins of the Virginia Tech offense. And uh, talked about the turning point with the young quarterback, Sean Glennon, a third-year sophomore. It was in that Georgia Tech game. It was a 38-27 loss. And late in the fourth quarter, even though a loss was uh, pretty much guaranteed and imminent, Glennon showed a lot of resolve in that game right to the end uh, throwing for a total of 339 yards and got his team up to the line of scrimmage and made some very significant strides in defeat. And after that game a lot of his teammates were coming up to him and saying hey that's what I want to see out of you on a regular basis. This time he hands it off to Brandon Orr out to the 37 yard line. Well, the biggest test for a young quarterback is winning games on the road and you look at Glennon and his performances this year most of his success has come at home including in that Georgia Tech game. You go back to the last road game at Boston College the Hokies only scored three points so Sean Glennon really trying to come out of this game at the Orange Bowl with his first big win on the road for Virginia Tech. A six yard pickup on first down. Or again, broke a tackle. Brandon Orr with another nice cut and has a first down at the 45 yard line. A missed tackle on the play by Taraz McCray of Miami. And that allowed Brandon Orr to get the first down on an eight yard pickup. Well, Brandon Orr gives you great balance and great vision as a tailback. And again, breaking tackles. It looked like Taraz McCray should have had him for a loss in the backfield. But Orr runs through arm tackles. You have got to square up on him, and you have got to take him to the turf. First down and 10. Orr again, squeezing forward. Maybe got a yard on the play. Virginia Tech ending the first half on a couple of positives. Well, and, and they turned Kirby Freeman's appearance in the game, the backup quarterback for Miami, into a positive occurrence. 
on the touchdown drive. And a you know, 36-yard drive. Glennon was operating on a short field. You know, Miami's defense is handicapped when their team is playing by from behind because you know, Virginia Tech can afford to be conservative, keep the ball on the ground, and not have Glennon take many chances. Especially doing it into the wind. He throws one up here. Incomplete at the 27-yard line. Glenn Sharp defending on the play against Josh Hyman. That one was a battle. And Glennon took a hit on the play as well. And Sean Glennon had what he wanted man-to-man -man outside. And Miami's usually going to give you a heavy dose of man-to-man, -man, but singled up on the outside. Hyman against Sharp. Merriweather coming on the corner. Blitz from the boundary. And this is a heck of a play by Sharp to not only go up and break the pass up, but almost comes up with a great interception. Almost pulled off a Lynn Swan, catching that one off his knee. Glennon goes right back to Hyman, and it's picked off, but there's a flag on the play. Sharp. And Glenn Sharp runs it out to the 43-yard line, but will this play stand? There's a flag in the vicinity of the interception at the 33-yard line. Hyman and Sharp were battling down the sidelines. Let's see how our officials called it. Now, this will surprise me if they call Sharp, because Sharp played this about as well as a cornerback can. And Larry Coker, you don't see him lose his temper much on the sidelines, but if this goes against Sharp, Larry Coker may go ballistic on us. As predicted, there's the reaction. And I think I think he has a point here. I thought that Sharp played this extremely well with the inside position. You're going to see some hand play between the athletes on the outside. That was Hyman on a fade route. The first. Number four on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first well, The penalty didn't happen anywhere there. Well, and... and Taking another look. And look at that. That's that's hand to hand. And, and I haven't seen a more ticky tack call on a cornerback this year. I mean, that is great play by a cornerback working man to man against the wide receiver. Larry Coker has reason to be upset. A dubious call in Coker's eyes, and here's Orr down to the 37 yard line got about three as we take one more look at the battle on the sidelines between Glenn Sharp and Josh Hyman well oh, this is a huge swing because Virginia Tech you know this gives them the ball in positive territory instead of Miami getting the ball out near midfield on a terrific interception by Sharp he's Virginia Tech on offense Glenn Sharp regarded as their best cover corner Now our official is going to discuss something else here. Look at the Hogs. Pig Suey doing a number on South Carolina tonight. Ball's going to be on the 37-yard line for Virginia Tech. They come into this game 3-2 and two in conference play. 6-2 and two overall. Please reset. 10 minutes, 36 seconds. Set the 36 seconds, please. Thank There's you. a look at uh, Hyman on the sidelines. He was battling sharp, and uh, that has been the tenor and the countenance of the faces of the fans here for most of the season at the Orange Bowl. Well, Hyman knows he got beat in that battle against Sharp. Or slipped through another would-be tackler and is brought down at the 35-yard line. You know, when defenses play the style like Miami and like Virginia Tech, where they outnumber you by a man or two in the box to take away the run, you got to count on quarterbacks playing brilliantly down the field on your defense. And Sharp gave his defensive coordinator, Randy Shannon, just a terrific play, and that interception was taken away. Now we had asked Randy Shannon, who he thinks his most pleasant surprises this year on defense. He said, you know what, Mark? I expect all of my guys to make great plays. That time, Glenn Sharp seemingly made one. And that's incomplete intended for Orr. There have been some controversial calls that have involved Glenn Sharp during the course of the year. And going back to the Fiesta Bowl in 2003, remember this one. Different number, but the same result. A pass interference call against Glenn Sharp. That time on Teddy Ginn, and that one was more than dubious. 
I mean, that flag came late. Fourth and five coming up. And a lot of people that know football across the country, a lot of people know that Larry Coker had one taken away on that call against Ohio State in a big game. They try and down it inside the five, but it bounces into the end zone. The Hurricanes, with their wind at the back, will have the ball after the 35-yard punt. Glenn Sharp thinking about that one, no doubt. We'll be right back. Your flight attendants will be coming through the cabin shortly, offering snacks for sale for $5. Also available, in-flight magazines for $3. If you'd like to rent a pillow or blanket, that'll be $2. You need to use the restroom? That fee's $4. If you need anything else, feel free to push that call button for a minimum fee of $1. How far are they going to go? For 35 years, Southwest Airlines has offered low fares with no strings attached. You are now free to move about the country. LG 37-inch LCD TV Integrated HD Tuner. Akai, 32-inch HD, 1,000 to 1 contrast ratio. Guys, please. HD antenna, HD monster cables, wall mounts. Come on, challenge For me. For LCD HD TVs and the best people to help you figure them all out. Universal remotes. I'm a tiger. <sighs> Go to Radio Shack. Booyah. So, what kind of financial help are you looking for? Maybe you need insurance to help protect you. Benefits to help your business reach new heights. Or a retirement plan to invest for the future. Then again, maybe there's someone who can help with all of those things. The Principal Financial Group will give you an edge. Tech leading 10 0 here at the Orange Bowl. 9.35 to go in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Hurricanes. And it off to Tyrone Moss, who picks up three on the play as we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Mark, let's get you a singular ESPN All-America Player of the Week update on Colt McCoy is having a career night against Oklahoma State. 341 yards through the air, three touchdowns, and became the Texas single-season touchdown pass record holder. Text vote date 7654 on your singular wireless phone to vote. Colt McCoy on a lot of yes. career nights and days lately. Second and six. All right, hands it off to Moss again, and Moss has stopped up short of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Folks, I want to make a correction. Before we went to break, we talked about uh, that call against Glenn Sharp, the cornerback, in that national championship game against the Buckeyes several years ago. That number seven on the play, thinking, oh, that wasn't Teddy Ginn. That's Teddy Ginn now, but back then it was Chris Gamble. Now with the Carolina Panthers. Two-way player, and not to ever take anything away from Jim Tressel in Ohio State. They were the national champs. They won the game, but, you know, you look at Larry Coker and the heat he's facing right now, and tough to see him have a, a national championship slip away on a call like that one. Third and six, right underneath complete. And that'll be good enough for the first down. Right at the marker, a DB and Hall making the tackle on the play. Tyrone Moss came out of the backfield to make the catch. Now that's a big conversion for Miami. Not a lot to be happy about on offense, but to keep the chains moving here. And I think they've been patient enough with the run here on some of the early downs, and it's time for Kyle Wright to get a few opportunities on first and second down. Nice job by Moss to move the chains, but you know, Kyle Wright, to work against this defense, is going to have to do some play action. Hard hitting between the tackles. And it's Moss again. 
Well, near the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. That's coming up a little bit later. You know, Tyrone Moss is senior, but he had an opportunity to write a different script and a different ending to his career at UM. He certainly would choose to do that, taking into consideration the injury, which really put him behind schedule. Coming back after ACL surgery on his knee. Second down and five. Moss on the draw. Trying to get to the edge, which he does. And Tyrone Moss with a nice burst out to midfield. First down, Hurricanes. Miami showing a little bit of that uh, patience and trust in the running game now. Yeah, DJ Parker, the free safety, coming up in support, got caught inside. Go ahead and roll it. I think he was surprised by Moss's ability to get to the outside. Let's freeze it right here. And that's a safety, DJ Parker. And he was fooled by the perimeter speed of Moss on that play. There's Moss again. Boy, this is as good as Tyrone Moss has looked all season. Down to the 43-yard line. Chris Ellis with the stop on the play. And the University of Miami, certainly with a great medical staff, uh, the way that they were able to get their guys back in action. Uh, Willis McGahey blew out his knee a couple of years ago. and uh, In that national title yeah. game against Ohio State. Uh, Frank Gore with a knee injury. He came back and is a productive, very productive player right now for the San Francisco 49ers. Charlie Jones now in the ball game at tailback for the University of Miami. Second down and four. Here's Jones. Made a nice cut and got the first down over the 40-yard line, falling forward to the 38. With 5.58 to go in the third quarter and the wind at their backs. Now we've talked about the great backs over the years for Miami. Portis, McGahee, James, just to name a few recently. But look at how deep Miami goes. Jones, watch him step over this tackle. Get the ball north and south for the first down. And it looks like on this drive, Rich Olsen feels that he can bully Virginia Tech a bit up front. Yeah. Eight and nine men on the, in the box. And still Olsen going with two tights. He's going to slug it out. That ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. Brendan Hill was coming, the linebacker, and got one of those paws up and batted it up in the air. It'll be second down and 10 coming up for Kyle Wright. Well, that's one of the plays where Kyle Wright's got to get back. And if you see the defensive end coming in unchallenged there, you can't try to throw the ball above his helmet because he's going to get up. He's going to use his, his frame there. And as a quarterback, sometimes you got to hold on to that ball and maybe tuck it for a couple positive yards. Not a very good opportunity there for Wright to get the ball outside. All right, a fourth-year junior graduating in December with a double major in sports administration and business. He's got to get down to business here. Put some points on the board. That's Charlie Jones on the carry. And Jones is stopped up at about the 37-yard line. Time permitting, stay tuned for the 50 car on a post-game report. Join Craig, Doug, and John on have scores and highlights from around the country. On a busy Saturday in college football. Oh, Mark, yeah, Miami's done a good job of running the ball on this drive, but I still think that Rich Olson's going to have to get some business done on first and second down with play action because eventually you're going to put Kyle Wright in a third and long situation along the way, and Miami trailing by 10 points. 10th play of the drive here. Wright underneath and incomplete. Intended for Greg Olson, the tight end. And even if he hits Olson on that ball, he's going to pick up five or six yards, and you're facing fourth and four. Give credit to Virginia Tech's defense. They're playing their bend, don't break style. Now look at this, David. With the wind at his back, Petty will attempt a 50. Boy, 62? Let's do the math on this. No, it's going to be about a 55-yard or maybe 56. He has a career long of 51. But he does have the wind in his back. You see those palm trees bending. The result of that, at times, 20-mile-per-hour gust. Pettigrew trying to put his team on the board when we come back.
is our country. This is our country. This is our truck. The all new Chevy Silverado. Today, I will earn rewards points faster than ever. For speed enhancement, I wear these striped pants. Victor, change it to something faster. I'd like two plane tickets to Miami using my City Premier Pass credit card. Since I also have a Citibank checking account, I get more points for paying my bills online. Victor, how do I look fast? Grr, tiger fast. Thanks to City, no one can touch my rewards point skills. Rewarding, very, very, very rewarding. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. The Home Depot's Improvement Week, November 2nd through the 8th. Chevrolet, America's brand. Chevy, an American revolution. And Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. A blustery day here in South Florida in Miami. John Petty going to attempt a field goal from 55 yards out. He's 2 of 5 from 50 plus in his career. And he drills this one. It's good. A crush groove by John Petty finally puts the Hurricanes on the board. A career long for him of 55 yards. Nothing petty about putting points on the board at this juncture of the game for Miami. Will that give them new life? We'll find out when we come back. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. The 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper add up to so much taste. 23 is always on the tip of your tongue. And so, at the end of the 23rd quarter, it's all tied up, 23-23. X is the square root of Y. True or false? Karen. 23? Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors and one mind-blowing taste, there's more to it. to save on your energy bill. And you can find them at the Home Depot. From clinics to helpful tips online to over 2,000 energy-saving products, we're proud to help you burn less energy and less money. So you like it? The Home Depot, the government's 2006 Energy Star Retail Partner of the Year. The one day everything went wrong is the one day Detective Brett Hopper can't escape. No! Tell me why this is happening! Tay Diggs. Daybreak, two-hour series premiere, Wednesday, November 15th, only on ABC. 4.43 to go in the third quarter. Virginia Tech leading Miami 10-3. And what in the name of Carlos Huerta do you make of that decision to go for the field goal? Do you try and get points on the board while you have the wind at your back? Do you like the call? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you what, Larry Coker showed a lot of guts on that because I, I think that was risky with the field position, but he had the confidence in Petty. You know, and, and you know, you miss that a 55 yarder and you give Virginia Tech a short field. Petty really converted on that opportunity to get the first points on the board. And Monroe drills this one through the back of the end zone. Well, Monday night, Deion Branch and the defending NFC champs, Seattle. Welcome Randy Moss in Oakland to Seattle as the two teams renew an old rivalry. Is it Monday yet? Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. The Raiders showing some life last week, especially the Raider defense against Roethlisberger. Four interceptions. Chris Carr taking this one, making a house call. 100 yards back the other way. Straight to the kitchen, baby. <laughs> 
First down and ten. Glennon with a play fake. And sacked back at the 15 yard line. Calais Campbell, you can't miss him on the field. He's six foot eight, 265, and he has really been coming on of late. You think when this guy gets to the NFL combine a year or two down the line, you think some representatives for NFL teams are going to be salivating over 81? No six doubt. foot eight. This guy long jumped 21 feet in high school, was a triple jumper. I mean, does he look the part? Leads the team with five sacks now. He made the big hit last week. It caused the fumble for the touchdown, and the defense comes up with another big game. Matt Weiner, this hurricane defense, starting to stir it up a little bit. Back to you. And not the only ones in the ACC stirring things up. Wake Forest has taken control of the Atlantic Division. They're tied with Maryland after beating Boston College. Matt Ryan threw for 400 yards, but he's picked there with a chance to tie the game. And that's sealed it. Wake is 8 1 for the first time since 44. Georgia Tech still leading at NC State. And Virginia Tech there needs a little help from Georgia Tech. Here they are on third down and long. The pass complete to Morgan. And Morgan has stopped up forward progress at about the 26. That's short of the first down. Ponder making the stop for Miami. And the Hurricane defense intransigent on that sequence immovable well that was a nice ball from glennon right on the money but levon ponder who's played well enough at safety to allow miami to ship merriweather to corner ponder was positioned inside perfectly and made a real crisp hit on the perimeter nick schmidt into punt standing on his own 11 for virginia tech two and a half to go in the third quarter into the wind and this is going to give Miami good starting field position, perhaps their best of the evening at about the 44-yard line. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, some of the pertinent points of the ball game so far, Virginia Tech with seven points off of a turnover. This one was the one. Brandon Flowers with the pick to set up the run by Brandon Orr. Those were the pivotal game plays so far along with this Petty career-long field goal from 55 yards out a few moments ago. The only points of the game so far for Miami. Well, you can't underplay the call that Larry Coker made to allow John Petty to try that 55-yarder. Tyrone Moss in the backfield on first and 10. Right looking for the out and up, going to downtown on a shot. And it's out of bounds. Intended for the freshman Sam Shields as we go downstairs to Stacy. Well, Mark, not only has this stadium erupted, but the players from Miami have erupted. They're smiling for the first time in this game, Mark. They have a moxie about them for the first time in this game. I've been to both sidelines, back and forth. These Miami players are fired up, and they're expecting big things as we move into the fourth quarter. Yeah, good point, Stacy. This is not a team that has quit. They have not let go of the rope. Second and ten. Tyrone Moss. Moss down to the 39-yard line, brought down by Carlton Powell. Sets up a third down and about six to go for Miami. And from the 38-yard line, Miami right now in about the same position they were on the last drive. And this would be about a 55 or 56 yarder. So the way Petty hit that last field goal, you have to think that the Hurricanes are in field goal position. It'll be interesting to see Rich Olson how he plays this as the offensive coordinator on this call. Yeah, is, he, is he thinking four downs, Mark? Might be. Tavares James, the starting tailback, watching from the sidelines. His cousin Edrin telling our Stacey Dales that he suffered a hip pointer injury. How right going to take off this time? Right. Got down, but maybe a little bit too soon. Did not get the first down at the 36-yard line. So is it field goal time, or do they go for it? Well, the field goal unit coming onto the field. Well, Kyle Wright one-on-one -on -one with a DB. That's a good career decision by Kyle Wright. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Down. I'll tell you what. That's a heck of a play by a DB, one of the most talented linebackers in the country. Yeah, his uh, older brother, Matt DB, played at Virginia Tech as well. This field goal attempt from 52 yards out. And it's partially blocked. 
Beamer ball rearing its head, getting a piece of the ball as it dribbles harmlessly down to the 14 yard line. Well, the second time around didn't quite work as well as the first opportunity. Well, and Petty looked like he hit this pretty well, but penetration. And he did hit that well. Number 76, Dwayne Brown, caught in there and got a hand up to partially block it right there. Well, and how about Dwayne Brown? That's a starting right tackle for the Hokies' offense, a guy who's played a critical role on special teams. I mean, what a rarity he is. He, he's on the punt coverage team, had a couple tackles last week. Going to tell you something about him. We were down in the field before the game looking at him. He is an athletic specimen. 6'5", about three bills, 300 pounds, four fingers in the air. And he's got a lot of care in him, a lot of talent, as he got one of those hands up with a crucial block for the Hokies. Our presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. When Susie and I retire, we'll be taking trips like this whenever we want. It's a good thing we've been planning. At Pacific Life, giving you the right tools to help you meet your financial goals is what we're all about. As you look to the future, look to Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. This is our truck, the all-new Chevy Silverado. Sunday. Attention shoppers, we're having a special today. The one episode everyone will be talking about. Open up, my daughter's inside. A hostage has been shot. The must-watch Desperate Housewives of the season, Sunday at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Skip Campbell sponsored the law forcing women seeking to place their child for adoption to list their names in the newspaper, as well as the names of all of their sexual partners. The Skip Campbell Scarlet Letter Law, it was anti-woman, anti-child, and anti-family. I fought on behalf of women, including a 12-year-old rape victim, to overturn that shameful law. But now Skip Campbell wants to be Attorney General. We can't let that happen. No way. Washington lobbyist Bill McCollum is running false smear ads against Skip Campbell. Caught you again, Bill. The truth is, Skip Campbell reformed Florida law to protect women's privacy and make adoption safer. That's why so many women legislators support Campbell. Bill McCollum took money from Jack Abramoff, then asked him about a job, took money from Enron, and voted their way in Congress. Even tried to let a deported criminal back in the U.S. as a political favor. Dishonest pals and dishonest ads. We can't trust lobbyist Bill McCollum. Problems at the polls for a group of early voters. Details tonight after the game. Welcome back to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines as we start the fourth quarter. Virginia Tech with a seven-point lead. And Glennon hands it off to Orr, who stopped up at the 33-yard line. Now, David, during the break, we're talking about the play calling now with Virginia Tech having the wind at their backs. How do you figure it out? Well, I think that they'll continue to give to Brandon Orr, but... You know, Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator, I think has done a real good job of getting Glenn and some opportunities on first and second down. And with the wind at their back here, I think it's only a matter of time before we see Glenn and test the cornerbacks for Miami man to man down the field. Second down and 11. Glennon brought down by Campbell, his second sack of the day. Peleus Campbell. Continuing to inspire that defense. Uh, what a play by Campbell. And Glennon was looking to take a shot down the field. But Campbell 
just flat out beat his man across the line of scrimmage, the offensive tackle, and look at how quickly on he got on top of Glennon. This is one of the top defensive end wow. prospects in the country as far as the NFL is concerned down the line. He got several basketball scholarship offers as well. Third and 16. Or brought down immediately at the 27 yard line by Kareem Brown. And it's going to be three and out for Virginia Tech. They're a little pumped up. And you watch Miami this year and the problems that they've had. You look at the defense. This is a BCS type defense. This is a defense really? good enough to take you to a BCS game, hands down. The problem, the offense is not. And a yeah, real tribute to this defense and Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, to continue to play tough in this football game with the offense not giving you much. Yeah, they came again to the game, number eight nationally in total defense. A line drive punt driving Bruce Johnson back to the 27. Johnson with a nice burst. And a nice return out to the 40-yard line. A 47-yard punt and a 16-yard return. And we're going to stay right here with just under 13 minutes to play. Miami with possession down a touchdown. Let's take a look at our ESPNU All-State standings review of the BCS. Boy, Michigan barely got by Ball State. The question begs now, how are they affected in the standings? No, I think they'll stay in that number two slot. Louisville, I do not think, was impressive enough on Thursday night. Right. But granted, they beat a very good West Virginia team, but I don't think the Louisville defense showed that they're a well enough balanced team to jump into that number two spot. First and 10 from their own 41. Miami with the ball. Tyrone Moss on the handoff. Spin move. And got about two and a half yards. Xavier Deby making the stop for Virginia Tech. And with a short game there on first down, I think we're going to see play action here. And Kyle Wright is going to have to make a few plays. We've only seen them take a deep shot once in this game downfield for Lance Liggett. Well, actually, they, they've taken a shot once in the first half, once in the second half. But, you know, I, I, I agree with you, Mark Jones. They have to continue to try to strike down the field and make Virginia Tech pay for the way they're playing defense on the line of scrimmage. A three-receiver formation. Pass complete at midfield. Ryan Hill making the catch that time, just short of the first down at the 50-yard line. They set up a third down and about one to go. Ryan Hill, a 5'11 freshman. This is a very young Miami team. Well, a young set of wide receivers, especially when you realize they've been missing Darnell Jenkins. They've been missing Ryan Moore. But they're going into the wind here. And they're going up against one of the top three defenses in the country. You know, Kyle Wright shows us his toolbox on that throw. That was a boring throw on a curl route laid right on the numbers. Third and one. Backs line up out of the eye. The deep back is Moss. And Moss gets the first down. And then some. Oh, Tyra Moss out of the mist. Reappearing Houdini. Touchdown. An improbable, implausible run by Tyrone Moss going into a frenzied group of would-be tacklers and emerging out of that pack and bursting across that grass for the touchdown. 50 yards in all. A career long for Tyrone Moss. And in an instant, in a burst, in a snap, this game is tied at 10 apiece. Tyrone Moss, the senior, 10 months ago, out of action with a bum knee, back in full effect from Carroll City to the Grove. It's tied at 10. It's ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC.
noticed? Southwest Airlines now has more non-stop flights from coast to coast than ever before. You are now free to move about the country. The last sound you hear before you step on the field. Click, clack! Sports sedans have come to be regarded as purely machine. But when design functions as a display of human skill and craftsmanship, rather than simply mechanical precision, the machine can evoke emotion. It can shape how you experience the road. It can go beyond machine. The all-new G is here. And it's from Infinity. This is not good. What if I get hurt and can't work? Wait, I have a flag. They give me cash to help pay for groceries, the car, even the cable bill. Lucky me. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Aflac! In two days, country music's biggest night, the CMA Awards, live ABC Monday. Back at the Orange Bowl, it's Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Larry Coker has seen his team get right back into this game. Tyrone Moss going over 100 yards rushing on a 50-yard run. His seventh 100-yard-plus game of his career. And we're tied at 10. Eddie Royal on the return. And Eddie Royal out to the 38-yard line. Let's take one more look at that touchdown run. Well, when you go up against Virginia Tech, you're going to have extra men in the box. Sometimes you got to make the extra man miss. Now watch Vince Hall here, one of the best linebackers in the country. He's going to come through the A-gap on the blitz. Zellner, the tight end, gets a piece of him. But then he gets in to Tyrone Moss. And Moss at about 5'9", 232 pounds, keeps that low center of gravity moving. What a play. Automatic first down. And that penalty on the kickoff return against Miami. They called it a personal foul. A very untimely penalty against Miami. That'll take a little bit of the wind out of your sails. But this defense has responded in the last few sequences. Now for Sean Glennon. How does he respond, the quarterback for Virginia Tech? Well, he's 15 yards, a big difference. Even with the nice run back by Royal, you really open up your playbook for Glennon here. You're able to take some shots here in the passing game out near midfield. Pats line up out of the eye. Play play. He takes a shot downfield. Incomplete. It was intended for Josh Morgan, but Brandon Merriweather was back there with one Sharp to break it up. Second yeah. down and 10. Merriweather and Sharp played this well. The ball was underthrown by Glennon. And it's tricky as a quarterback when you're playing with wind, sometimes even with the wind at your back. Glennon tried to gear down on this throw, take a little velocity off of it. He underthrew the ball. And once again, Sharp in perfect position. He's played a brilliant game at corner. Help over the top from Merriweather. Second down and 10. Little blitz coming. And they got to Glennon at the 46-yard line once again. Campbell with his third sack of the game. Calais Campbell bringing the noise and bringing the funk tonight. A six foot five, 200, actually 6'8", 265. And watch him run Glennon down. I mean, watch the closing speed on Glennon. Glennon feeling like, hey, I got a defensive end on my back, but I can outrun him, not Campbell. Campbell taking a breather. Late substitution coming on for the Canes. Tavares Gooden in the ball game. Third down, 
and 14 for Virginia Tech. Brennan, the fifth sack for Miami. Baraka Atkins doing it that time. David, you call this defense a BCS type defense. They're showing that right now. All night long, they're a BCS defense. And remember, this team had control of the game last week against Georgia Tech throughout the first half and throughout the third quarter. Atkins might have had the best game of his career against the Yellow Jackets. This defense living up to their bill. Nick Schmidt with a low line drive punt. Fielded at the 18 by Bruce Johnson. Johnson reversing his field temporarily and brought down to the 33 yard line. A 41 yard punt. And seven on the return. 9 10 to go in the fourth quarter. When you dial up the heat in South Florida, sometimes it's not the humidity, it is the heat. We'll be back with more right after this. Engineered to alter your experience. Crafted to evoke emotion. Designed to go beyond machine. The all new 306 horsepower G from Infinity. Have to drive. I love Nothing it. like Friday nights with my best friends. We just have one rule. Everyone orders something different. It's Olive Garden's new chicken Roma. Sautéed chicken layered with Italian cheeses and fresh Roma tomatoes. Or new Asiago chicken topped with creamy Alfredo and Asiago cheese. Two delicious new dishes from Olive Garden, plus endless breadsticks and salad. <laughs> the best part of being with my friends? We all have such great taste. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Here's how it works. Get the nation's slimmest smartphone at a very slim price. The Q. With easy access to email and Windows Mobile. It's the stylish way to work. Exclusively from Verizon Wireless. America's most reliable wireless broadband network. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Infinity, makers of the all-new 306 HPG, design beyond machine. Under Armour, the advantage is undeniable. And the principal financial group will give you an edge. Miami Hurricanes first down and 10 from their own 33 with nine minutes to go. Kyle Wright, the receiver screen complete. Rashawn Jones on the reception for Miami. And how about this Hokies defense? And Bud Foster, we're looking at a defense that a year ago was the top defense in the country. And for Bud Foster to reload, to lose Tap, to lose Williams, and to reload and be sitting here with the number three defense in the country. You try to throw those perimeter screen routes to the wide receivers, Foster's defense gobbles them up. But Foster has that lunch pail award for his defensive players. A couple of weeks ago, he took it back, didn't think that anyone was worthy of it. Still holding on to it, trying to motivate his defense. Now right underneath, there's a flag down to the play. Zellner, the tight end, brought down at about the 31. Let's see what this flag is about. It's going to be a holding call against Miami. Back to Bud Foster, you know, after that Boston College debacle that they had, they were a little disappointed in the way that they reacted to adversity. He took the lunch pail award away from the player that held it at the time and put it back in his office. I spoke to him down in the field before the game. I said, Coach, did you bring it with you? 72, offense. 10 yards from the previous spot, still second down. He said, you know, Mark, I didn't bring it with me. I'm going to keep it for a while because it's been working so far. They've had two good games in a row defensively. Now, 
couple of good games. I thought the game last week against Clemson, maybe the best defensive effort we've seen across the country. I think it might be time for Foster to just <laughs> redistribute that pail, but that is a huge holding call on Miami. Not only does it hurt them in terms of picking up a first down and moving the chains, but it changes field position. 8.02 to go. They set up the screen. Complete to the 29-yard line, Tyrone Moss brought down by Robertson on the play. They've got to get all the way out to the 43 for the first down. And this offense has really been out of sorts. You look at the schedule for Miami here in the 06 season, not really a quality win on the schedule through eight games. And the Miami's offense never quite in rhythm. I think finally for the first time in many weeks, we're seeing Rich Olsen and his offense get a nice mix of run and pass against a very tough defense. They're finally finding a group. Third and 14. Three receivers out. And it's almost intercepted at the 45-yard line by Brandon Flowers. Who would have had his second of the day. It was intended for Ryan Hill. And it's fourth down coming up. They'll have to punt. Yeah, Brandon Flowers wanted to see a flag. An offensive pass interference call. Flowers had beaten his man to the outside on that ball. Breaking on it quickly as a defensive back. And holding call. Really a huge mistake on that drive. Ryan Monroe into punt now. And that's Eddie Royal. One of the top punt returners in the OCC. Great punt by Monroe. Fair catch called at the 34-yard line by Eddie Royal. With 7.07 to go in the fourth quarter, a 37-yard punt. About 12 miles away on South Beach. There's no dog in this game. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. As a growing business, you don't always get the attention you really need. That's where the principal can help. From banking to health plans to retirement solutions, we have lots of ways to help a not-so-big business rise above the crowd. The Principal Financial Group. We'll give you an edge. LG 37-inch LCD TV Integrated HD Tuner. Akai 32-inch HD Thousand to One Contrast Ratio. Guys, please. HD antenna, HD monster cables, wall mounts. Come on, challenge For me. For LCD HD TVs and the best people to help you figure them all out. Universal remotes. I'm a tiger. Go to Radio Shack. Booyah. So intelligent, it knows precisely when to turn rear-wheel drive performance into all-wheel drive control. So intuitive, it's beyond machine. The all-new 306 horsepower G from Infinity. Wednesday. I need to get the hell off the siren. The best episode of the year arrives. The fall finale. Close your eyes. No. An all-new Lost Wednesday at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Welcome back, everyone. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Deadlocked at 10 under the lights of the Orange Bowl here in Miami. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie and Stacey Dales down to the field. Pivotal game of sorts for both teams in the ACC's Coastal Division. First and 10 to give this to Orr and nowhere to go for him. Baraka Atkins making the stop that time. This Miami front seven and all has done a wonderful job on the last four possessions for Virginia Tech. Now this defensive front for Miami is flat out dominating the football game into the fourth quarter here. The game is being played on Virginia Tech's side of the line of scrimmage. And this is a real quandary for Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator. You run the ball, you lose about seven yards, you drop back and pass in this situation, you're liable to get Glenn and hit in the back. And he's liable to put the ball on the turf. Second and 16. Virginia Tech's been sacked four times in the game. 
Brennan, lucky to get rid of it in time, under heat again, ends up on his wallet. Kareem Brown applying the pressure that time. And Glennon is taking some licks back there. Third and 16 coming up. Uh, Sean Glennon is playing a smart football game, even though he hasn't been able to have much success. Look at Kareem Brown come free. Now, this team is so deep, Miami on defense. They rotate talent through this lineup, and it goes back for years. But Sean Glennon, with a tie game, I think he's been smart. And he's fighting an uphill battle here against a defensive front that is whipping the hope. Hokies up front. Virginia Tech 2 of 11 on third down tonight. Third and 16. Lennon taking a shot up top. And Sharp. Interception. Glenn Sharp with the pick. It's almost, almost as good as a punt. But nonetheless, Miami will start off on their own 30-yard line. Now Sharp has been tested tonight. Now he's been tested, but he has played just a super game at cornerback. And he's been tested more than once down the field. Now Clowney, Morgan, guys that are receivers that can get down the field and make big plays. Sharp has been in position. And let's face it, the Hurricanes have played a lot of man-to-man -man defense. At co the college level, when you put cornerbacks out on islands and they respond the way that Sharp has tonight, this is really the second interception he's come up with. The first taken away on what I thought was a pretty sketchy pass interference call. And the booth reviewing this one as we take a look at Sharp. Looked like he caught that one. And that kind of brings to mind a controversial call last week in the game against Georgia Tech when Brandon Merriweather right there, number 19, apparently seemed to have an interception in the end zone but Larry Coker did not challenge the play, and thus it ended up in a Georgia Tech field goal. Well, and, and Sharp, the question there, how much of the football hit the turf, and did he cradle the football? It's got to be indisputable evidence. I think this call will stand. After review, the call stands as rules on the field. We have an interception. First down. 6.03 to go in the fourth quarter. University of Miami, with the win today, would become bowl eligible. Virginia Tech with a win would keep its hopes alive of making it to the ACC championship game. They would need a lot of things to happen that be are beyond their control. Well, even if they don't make it to the ACC championship game, the Hokies, they could be in a pretty nice bowl game if they win tonight and play well in the rest of the way in November, playing after the new year. First and ten out of the shotgun, and they whistle this one dead. Might have been a little bit of movement by Chris the snap. False start. 76. Offense. The five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's who it was. And once again, the Hurricanes with a very inauspicious penalty. Not that there's any time, uh, any time to be a good time for one. Well, and Rutledge has struggled in this football game with the quickness, the blitzing off the edge by the Hokies. That's enough it. to rattle a backup tackle. But Kyle Wright, you know, the holding call in the last possession and an early movement call on this, he's getting behind the eight ball. Well, that's their eighth penalty of the game. Wright passes. It's complete. At the 32-yard line, Greg Olson fought for four extra yards after the initial contact. I want to ask you this, David, as a former quarterback. On the last series, we saw Kyle Wright lock on to his intended receiver, Ryan Hill. Is that a function of having young receivers and maybe not having all the trust that he might have in them? Well, his quarterbacks get more comfortable, and certainly Kyle Wright should be comfortable in his 21st start tonight. But as, as quarterbacks get more comfortable, they can use their eyes and not always stare down receivers. But... That's that that can be a problem if you have young receivers and you're not sure about the routes they're running and and they're not sure about the routes they're running. Sometimes as a quarterback you're forced to lock on a bit. Second and ten right under heat delivers a strike complete out near midfield. It's Ryan Moore with his second catch of the night. Ryan Moore playing in his first game in 49 weeks dating back to last year's regular season finale. Now this is a really the best play of the night by Kyle Wright. He's facing pressure. Watch him step up into the pocket and then throw across his body. And Moore does a great job of helping his quarterback, finding that void back to the middle of the field. Nice ball. 
First down and 10, Tyrone Moss in a tailback. Moss with the handoff. He went for 50 on the last time he touched it. This one, he'll lose a couple of yards. Nolan Burchett making the stop up front for Virginia Tech. Clock running with 4-12 to go in the fourth. Negative plays for both offenses is a problem yes. here in the fourth quarter. You know, the Hokies and Miami, especially in first down calls, are tending to take the ball backwards instead of down the football field. Second and 13. Who will be the playmaker for Miami? Will it be Leggett? Will it be Moore? Will it be Shields? Could it be Moss once again? 3.48 to go. Clock running. Right, batted down at the line of scrimmage and picked off by a DB. An incredible bounce and Karam into the arms of Xavier Adibi and the Hokies have an incredible field position as a result. Well, part of being a quarterback is finding seams in between your offensive lineman and defensive front to deliver the football. And that was a heck of a play by Chris Ellis, number 49, to get his hand up. Watch a right hand super play to get the deflection. And as has been the case lately, a DB making the big plays for the Hokies at linebacker. Once again, it rests with the Miami defense. Can they come up with another good sequence or Stopped up at the 27-yard line by Campbell. The clock running with 3.09 to go in the fourth quarter. Remember, Brandon Pace, their place kicker, their field goal kicker, has already knocked through a field goal today, and he does have the wind at his back on this sequence. Now Pace is about as good a pressure kicker as you'll find in the country. Virginia Tech going to take a shot or two, though, to get a six or a seven-pointer up on the board. On second and 11. Blitz coming, running, and it's dropped in the end zone. Intended for Josh Morgan. Third and ten coming up. Uh, this is one of the best throws we've seen from Sean Glennon all night. And I really felt like Morgan should have made that catch. Yeah. Post corner route, Glennon dropped it right on the money. I mean, this is a beautiful throw by a quarterback that has been under duress for the better part of the second half. In and out of the arms of Josh Morgan. That should have been caught. Yeah, and Morgan usually makes that catch. They're going to have to hustle to get this playoff. And they're going to call a timeout instead. And we'll take one right along with them. They have one remaining. Miami with three to go. Can Larry Coco salvage the season? Will Pace knock it through? We'll find out when we come back. Sports sedans have come to be regarded as purely machine. But when design functions as a display of human skill and craftsmanship, rather than simply mechanical precision, the machine can evoke emotion. It can shape how you experience the road. It can go beyond machine. The all-new G is here. And it's from Infinity. When I was 12, I saw the ocean for the first time. I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I decided, one day, I'm going to have a house right on the water. And then, if I have kids, they can live there. And, you know, maybe their kids can have the house after them. You once made a promise to yourself about your future. At John Hancock, we have the products you need to help build, protect, and sustain the future you've always wanted. John Hancock, the future is yours. When you want to get away... Let's go, girls! Enterprise Rent-A-Car will pick you up free. and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up.
Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Warm flatbread covered in three melted cheeses, wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. It's a textural taste sensation. To get crunchy, chewy, and cheesy, think outside the bun. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And some of the pivotal plays of the game so far. Campbell with a couple of sacks tonight already for Miami. And Tyrone Moss with a 50-yard touchdown run to get them right back into the game. And then this interception by Xavier Adibi to put Virginia Tech in good field position on this drive. And that is Brandon Pace who's already made a field goal from 32 yards out tonight. And that ball was tipped by Ellis to set up the interception. Well, Virginia Tech, if they can pick up a first down here, they can run the clock down, maybe milk the clock down for a final field goal. That's what's on the line on this play. Third and ten. They give it to Orr, and he busts one. And he broke the hearts of the Hurricanes with that run. Brandon Orr with a first down and a pick of 16 yards with 2.21 to go in the fourth. Well, it's been a struggle for the Hokies running the football against this front seven the entire second half. And this run from Orr could not have come at a better time. Miami has to think about using their timeouts now. You got to figure they've got a field goal in their back pocket. You want to use your timeouts to make sure you save enough time on the clock for Kyle Wright to come down the field and either answer three points or seven points. That's what some of those Hurricane fans might be thinking. Here's Orr again. Trying to slip and slide down to the eight yard line. Or has gone over 1,000 yards for the season. Well, 1,008, the leading rusher in the ACC. If I'm Larry Coker, I'm calling timeout, and he had to come all the way out on the field to call that timeout, and they lost about 12, 14 seconds. Miami with two timeouts remaining. It's not that bleak. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Okay, smart guy. Tell me what the ACC Interinstitutional Academic Collaborative is. Well, that's simple. The IAC nurtures academic collaborations among all 12 ACC universities. Yeah. There's research being conducted abroad that tackles tough global issues now being shared across all ACC campuses. And these students will be better prepared for global careers. Hey, how do you know all this? The ACC, 12 universities with global goals. Brandon Orr, a pivotal player for Virginia Tech and their success tonight. We're tied at 10 with 1.42 to go in the fourth quarter. Virginia Tech with one timeout remaining. Miami has two timeouts remaining. And you have to be very careful on defense here. You give up a penalty that's an automatic first down penalty, and Virginia Tech will run that clock down to three or four seconds and kick a field goal. you got to keep that in mind if you're Miami. Second and goal coming up for Virginia Tech. Orr on the carry. Orr! Dances into the end zone. Touchdown, Hokies. His second touchdown of the day makes it 16 to 10. And you would bet more than a few primal euphoric screams down there for Virginia Tech in stark contrast to the reaction of Larry Coker. But in a perverse way, David, I ask you, does that maybe help the fact that their cause now has a few more seconds, Miami's cause has a few more seconds added to it? Well, and Miami had two timeouts to take care of second and third down, but it, the only silver line is they're going to get to keep two timeouts. Freeze it right there. And this is, we talked about the vision and the cutback ability of Brandon Orr coming off two consecutive 200-yard-plus games. And when the going got tough, Brandon Orr stepped up on this drive for the Hokies. 
may be a game decider. And now it's Kyle Wright, sir. Young man, Brandon Orr, who about 10 months ago had shoulder surgery, went back home to Virginia, worked at a 7-Eleven, packing meat into a freezer. And in the process, he gave himself a checkup from the neck up, had an attitude adjustment, came back to work at Virginia Tech with a lot more resolve, a lot more determination. And right now, how does Kyle Wright get over the fact that he threw that interception that led to that touchdown? Can he shake that? Well, you got to shake it. And, and keep in mind for Miami, when they come off the sideline, the clock's going to be rolling on the change of possession. Plenty of time. Two, two timeouts and a buck 39 left in the game is an eternity in college football as long as you keep the ball beyond the chains as a quarterback and you don't take sacks. Xavier Adibi, number 11 for Virginia Tech, made the interception that led to that touchdown score, the go-ahead score for Virginia Tech. And the combination of Adibi and Vince Hall at linebacker, one of the best two tandems in the country, Adibi playing monstrous the last couple of weeks. This kick will go through the back of the end zone, and the clock runs on the kick. Well, on most of these ABC stations, stay tuned for your local news immediately following the game over on ESPN Sports Center. We'll have the BCS breakdown, the Patriots playing for respect tomorrow, and an upset at the Breeders' Cup. 135 to go. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie and Stacey Dales down to the field. Boy, we have seen some wonderful defensive football tonight. But now it's about offense for Kyle Wright and Miami. They work out of the shotgun. And he's picked off. That might do it. Into the arms of Flowers, his second interception of the game. Brandon Flowers making a homecoming. He played his high school football about 25 minutes north of here on I-95. Has some 40 family members watching in attendance, including his father. Well, Kyle Wright's going to try to hit a dig route to the left side. That's a square in. And that ball has led just too far to the inside. I didn't really like Leggett's effort on this ball either. you got to try to stretch out and get a piece of the ball. Anything to allow that ball to get deflected. And Kyle Wright's reaction tells the story, perhaps of the entire season, for the Hurricanes. And what a play by Flowers. We talked about big play defensive players for Virginia Tech. Flowers is playing as well as a boundary corner as we've seen in the ACC in the last couple weeks. That was a heck of a play coming there inside was. against Leggett. Timeout, Virginia Tech. There's Brandon Flowers from Delray Beach, Florida. About 30 minutes north of here on I-95. Here's some great irony. His father travels, jumps in his car, and drives up to Blacksburg for each and every one of their home games. And the joy for his father today, he only had to drive about 20 minutes southbound on 95 to watch his son with two interceptions today and two pivotal plays in their seemingly imminent victory with 54 seconds to go. Well, and Miami had three timeouts there. It was over a minute to go. You know, you got to know that the clock is going to roll there. And so you either let the clock roll for the entire 25 seconds and then use your timeouts after first, second, and third down. Yeah, I, you know, Miami not on the ball. They're calling a timeout. This game, you know, was, was not over and still is not over. They have three timeouts to stop the clock, but you've got to stop Virginia Tech from scoring. Actually, two timeouts left. So now you're only going to be left with 15, 20 seconds. They did not handle the clock well there. Interesting observation is... Glennon takes a knee. 50 seconds to go. Now right with a costly interception on the last two series for Miami. One which led to the touchdown and one which led to Virginia Tech having possession presently as Miami uses its final timeout. Actually, one timeout remaining now. Well, and even if Miami stops Virginia Tech, there's going to be very few ticks on the clock, maybe 10, 15 seconds, but Miami did not play the clock well there on the pick by Flowers. There was well over a minute left. And Miami was slow with the trigger to take that first time out. At the rule change this year, Mark Jones, yep. the clock rolls on a change of possession. It really is amazing to see that a lot of coaches, a lot of teams still kind of 
working to assimilate themselves with the nuances of that new rule. Well, it's, you know, we're in week 10 of the college football season, and it continues to catch some coaching staffs by surprise. But I, it didn't catch Brett Bielema by surprise. I give him the clock award of the season <laughs> for manipulating that rule today as wisely as he did at the end of the first half with Wisconsin's game against Penn State. He found a loophole. Lennon takes a knee. Virginia Tech on the verge, perhaps, of improving to 7-2 and two on the season. More importantly for them, 4-2 and two in conference play. And tonight's Chevrolet player of the game, Brandon Orr, 28 rushes for 79 yards. Not a great per-rush average, but two very important touchdowns in a very defensive-minded football game. Tyrone Moss, meanwhile, 13 rushes, 103 yards. Most of those 103 coming on that 50-yard gallop for the touchdown, which tied the game at 10 apiece. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, this was the type of game that reminded you of the Florida State-Miami games we see as openers year in and year out, and that, that rivalry coming to a close. But sometimes it's the first quarterback to flinch down the stretch, and Kyle Wright not only flinched, he flinched twice. A couple of costly picks. Now third and 14 for Virginia Tech. And you wonder about the confidence now, perhaps, of Kyle Wright the rest of the way, and uh, how much more playing time will Kirby Freeman get? Miami's still looking to become bowl eligible. Glennon takes a knee. As the clock continues to roll. Miami with one timeout remaining. Well, none now, actually. Virginia Tech's going to use that last timeout with about five or six seconds left in the game, and I doubt Frank Beamer would ever dream of attempting to punt here. I think he snapped the ball to Glennon and see if he can burn some time. No timeouts remaining. Fourth and 14. The live day. Offense number seven. I will start the game clock on the snap. I will start the game clock on the snap. After the penalty. Well, this is an interesting situation for Virginia Tech because if you run the football, the play's going to be over, and then you give Miami an over-the-top Hail Mary. So, you know, I, I kind of like Glennon lining up here, dropping three steps and throwing the ball downfield and making sure he puts five seconds of air underneath it. They give it to Ola. We're going to see a Hail Mary here on the last play of the game. Oh, uh, it's over. We're not going to see much of anything. Well, the clock, they rolled that clock. I think they're going to put a second or two back on the clock here. Well, I, I, think, I, think, I think the referee's got, yeah, he's got to direct these teams to the sidelines, and Kyle clock. Wright's got to get his team over. to the line of scrimmage. We're going to put two seconds on the game clock. Two seconds, and Miami will have the ball. And you've got to get your offense over the ball. You've got to get your Hail Mary formation set, and you're going on the first count. Let's take a look. Yeah, six seconds to go, and like I said, if you run the ball here, the clock is going to stop on a change of possession until they reset it. Yeah, there's three seconds to go when the whistle goes. Yeah, three, two at the least, but, but Kyle Wright's got to make sure here and watch. They've loaded up on the right side of the field. They've got three receivers out there. They've got to be able to snap it. They've got to be ready to go. Well, they will, and the, and the referee, he's going to wind it right here. And Kyle Wright's got to be ready. They gotta snap it. They get it off in time. Right. Uh, three players down there. And it's intercepted by Macho Harris. There's a flag on the play. Here's the call. Outside. Defense. Wow. It's a five-yard penalty. We have one day off. What about that? Miami's going to get another opportunity. We've seen the game seemingly be over twice now. Well, it, it hasn't been over. And, <laughs> and, you know, Virginia Tech was in a tough position there with six seconds on the clock. It's going to be an untimed down, so no hurry here for Kyle Wright to get the snap off quickly, and you get another shot into the end zone. Stranger things have happened. Wright has three receivers out to his right. They're going to go underneath and play the lateral game. That lateral goes awry. 
Miami recovers, but it's done. And that's it. They used a different strategy going underneath and short. Tried the old Stanford band play, but the band was not on the field. And Virginia Tech wins it, 17 to 10. For David Norrie and Stacey Dales, I'm Mark Jones saying so long from Miami. Our final score once again, Virginia Tech winners by seven. Right now we join John Saunders in our New York studio. So long.